cream. Oh, I was gonna say, where I'm from, that's a burger. <laughs> yeah, nah. <laughs> no, up, up here, a double double is a coffee. Hello? Sounds, sounds disappointing. Mike, Mike what's ladies up? and gentlemen, Mike Love! Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Can you guys hear me good? Audio level's fine? Oh, yeah. Just wanna double check. Sounds okay. good to me. You sound great. Now, Mike. Let's um, see. Yeah. I just want you to know how it works around here. Okay. Uh, I'm in charge, and no, <laughs> no creative output from you. Okay? Yes, sir. I want you to know that. Understood. Um,. You only speak when when spoken to. Yes, sir. I grew up in a military family. I understand that. Uh, we're calling this episode the clock. Okay. Um, Time's up. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just making a joke because I heard that you were in a fucking rough situ a rough podcasting situation. Oh man. So Nate said it must have been hell. Yeah, it was interesting. Um, I was told to call it creative differences for a while, but that was the difference between everything. I couldn't be creative. It was just really restrictive, but yeah. Oh, he, was, uh, he sounds was, racist. Uh, yeah, I was really frustrated because <laughs> I came on, and I'm glad I came on because I had a good time. But like, e even at the very beginning, like Beaker and I were talking about whatever, and and Levi kind of shushed us. Yeah, I just I didn't get it. I just felt like you should let that chemistry build and ride into the show. Do a nice little segue. Nice. <laughs> people want to listen to other people like having a good time as opposed to people being robots, right? I mean, oh yeah. Did they read Office? Uh, well, there was show notes, but how can I even word this? Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure where that came from. I guess I don't want to come off too negative, but in hindsight, the way... Oh, no, no, it's all good. No, I, it doesn't even matter if we were, but I just want to say that from when the show started, everything just happened too fast versus planning it out like me and Ziggy have been for the past four weeks. Me and Ziggy Sarah are going to be doing a podcast. Okay. Oh yeah, I can't. I forgot. I forgot. I can't talk out loud. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was gonna announce it on the show. That's why I waited from Twitter because Nate made the logo. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> But uh, um, that's yeah. exciting. Is she still going to do 1600 dust, though? Yeah. So the way it works is her time, they start at 8 p.m. They go yeah. for an hour, but you know it's a 20-minute show. And then at 9.15 her time, we're going to start and then be done at 10.15 her time. So we're going to oh, record wow. after 1600. She said um, it's easier that way. They can do their show. And then she was like, if anyone's going over or they're being annoying, she can just boot them out the room and be like, I got a real show. Get out of here. You know, just being sarcastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, it's, it's all going to work out because she wants to do both shows in one day and basically have like Sunday to herself instead of stretching out over the weekend. And I can understand that. Yeah. What's it about? So what we're going to label it as, it's show, a podcast. Right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to put it Okay. Yeah. 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 You're right. No, no. It's uh, fine. It's fine. Here, but... but before we start the show, you guys want to hear the, uh, the song Aruni? Yeah. Oh yeah. Let me um let me mute this. Let me see. Right. Okay. I just gotta download it. Right Mike, here. you can be on video if you want. It's optional. It's optional. Am I? Are, are you guys on video? I am, I, but I can't be right now. My computer is stupid. <clears throat> Unfortunately, but uh, you can, if you want to take your shirt off or whatever, that's cool. Oh, one <laughs> second. One second. <laughs> I want to get mad. That's too funny. We're just all just having fun, you know. Eve says that they do it for audio cues so that there's less talking over each other but i don't know I, it doesn't matter to me i'm i put mine on but it doesn't whatever you want to do is fine yeah i'll do it give me one second one second you supposed to be grown motherfucker oh, i'm gone why isn't this downloading craig i want to take a real quick break right after we do like before we jump into the deck all right, why? We can just, just so I can use the restroom. I mean, why you just feel like. 
Why do you hate me? I don't. I mean, I can hold it, but then I'm gonna get all. I'm gonna be all squirmy like the last 20 minutes of the show. I'm just joking. For some reason, it's not let me download the song, but it's let, it'll. All right, Twitch chat. Anything. We're about to start Dude, into it was the wild so podcast. Funny yesterday, Hope y'all enjoy here, this. I'm trying to set up like a coaching Let's get session it. for one of our patrons. But first, the 15 dollars. Five minute break. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> be right back. And I'm, we're sitting there chatting and asking him like, okay, what's your goals? You know, what's your rank? What are you looking to play? And I'm, and I'm talking to this guy for half an hour. And then he's like, oh, yeah, it's me, Blue Train. I'm like, what? I know you. Like, it's some dude that I've known for a long time. I'm like, well, on here it just says your name is Andrew or whatever. Like, uh, I didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> Sorry. Dude, I got bad news for you, bud. Yeah, what's up? I feel like most of the listeners are going to pick you to coach them. No, that's fine. I don't care. Just, just, a, just, a, just a guess. We'll All see right. what happens. What's this? This is blah, blah, blah. So, um... You said you wanted to uh, preview the song first. Well, not preview, yeah, it, but like we can listen to it. Play it for you guys, yeah. But yeah. right now, I just have to resend it because the link is not seeming to work. Oh, so, can you get a second? I need video. you to. I need you to email me the MP3 for the bonus episode so I can put it on the Patreon. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. I'll do that right when the show ends. I'll just put a song in the beginning and the end and and, and cut out your thing. I'm a dummy. I completely forgot. So if just you pretend... want to email me the MP3s too, I can throw them up there. Yeah, during the show, just pretend like it's already on the Patreon because it will be by the time the show comes out. Okay. Okay. For some reason. It's... Oh, I should join that. I'll definitely next um. Let me get uh, next pay cycle. I'll definitely join that. I have no problem doing that. Ten bucks a month spot on the show? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding.
That was dope. Got me hype. Oh no, I was like, uh, what, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Reno. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That was good stuff, man. <laughs> Can you get the fan? I'm cold. I'm hot. You got my lady to get the fan. Nice. It's too hot. Nate's got fucking central air over there, that fucking guy. It's 94 It's expensive, today. but it's worth it. I just guessed I knew he had it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I never told him that. <laughs> Nate has central air, Tiana. He said it's expensive, but worth it. I'm, I'm old. You start caring yeah. about that stuff, it's worth the money. <clears throat> All right, I just gotta go take a pee for it quick, and then we'll start the show. All right, yeah, cool. I may as well too. I'll be right back. <clears throat> All right, same. Bye, my Shut up. I'm recording. <laughs> she can she can come on. That's why. Alright. <clears throat>
Oh, you guys are hearing that? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. It's kind of muffled, but I didn't know. It sounded kind of funny, I think. I don't know. All right. Okay, guys. Uh, Mike, tell me about uh, your day real quick. Well, what you did so far today. What I did today? Yeah. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Audio audio test. Test. oh, oh, oh gotcha, gotcha. Nate, we don't ruin it. Neat. I, we're, uh, we just really want to know about your day, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> so, my day so far, um, I woke up at 10.10. 10. It's now 11.40. Story and dog, uh, Nate. Well, how was your day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's, it's great. Man, this episode is gonna be awesome. I'm really excited. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. One second. So, is the con one sec, is the controller on? Where's my hat? Uh, am I the only one on video? Um, yes, but that's okay, because I was going to stream, and I have the Skype set up, so you'll be on stream. Oh, fun. All right, well. I mean, it's not like my stream is as popular as your podcast, so not worried about it. <laughs> I tried this before, but what's his name? You know who would get upset, so I was like, I'll wait till I'm on different shows. Oh, why are you streaming it? They're not going <laughs> to listen to the show. I'm like, what are you talking about? But okay. <laughs> Acting like I'm ninja. They like, dude, they're not going to watch my stream over the podcast. Like, <laughs> You don't have to censor yourself. Yeah. Um, yeah, we ain't, we ain't about that. No. Mm. All right. We're going to go live. <clears throat> Time's up. Let's We're do this. Live, yep. Jam. All right. In six, five, four, three, two, one. Welcome, 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 everybody, to another episode of Into the Wild, a Hearthstone podcast, the first wild exclusive Hearthstone podcast on the Information Superhighway. I am your host, Craig of Canada, and I am joined, as always, by the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented, the... Hmm? The rap superstar? The rap superstar! <laughs> <laughs> Nate Wolf, how the hell are you, Nate? I'm doing really good. Uh, we <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, no, it's been a really good week. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. It's been a great week. We've got an awesome guest. Uh, and uh, I've been watching Luke Cage all week, and it is dope. I've got one episode left, and it is so good. I have to look but enough, enough about that. Uh, hey, so we got Mike Lowe with us today. What's up, Mike? Yo, yo, Mike yo, yo, yo. Lowe. What's up, everybody? How we doing? I'm really excited, dude! You killed it last night in the UHL playoffs, dude. I, that still feels like a dream. I couldn't, I couldn't believe. First of all, Hat went undefeated all first season, undefeated all second season, taking me down on that run. So when he I took won, me down three. And oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. So he defeated you as well. So yeah. When I won the first three games, I'm just like. <laughs> This isn't real. I'm like, is he trying? He is trying. He wouldn't do that to me. I was like, no, he's going to get some wins. And then, bam, the next two games dropped and a little back and forth. And then it came down to a best of one, that mage versus the rogue. Dude, that was crazy. I couldn't believe that. When I had that power blast, I, um, I had a fireball and another spell, Cinderstorm. And I'm like, I need to fireball this Edwin, slow down his board rush, whittle him down to 10 health. And then once he passed... No kind of armor, no taunt. I had the fire uh, pyro blast. I'm like, dude. I'm like, final four. Let's go. Said what? Pl well played. Played the pyro blast, and there we were. It was awesome. Hat's a great competitor. So, and no oh, means am I. Might, yeah, I, everyone does. And no means am I like talking bad or being you know bashful. But it just feels good to get that win after losing to him. So. Oh yeah, rematch. no, me too. And and it was funny because uh, I, I mean we could talk about UHL later. Um, yeah. But like I I. You know, I was rooting for you too, and 
and I love Hat. Hat's Hat's wonderful. Hat's one of our friends, and, mm-hmm. and he's got a great show and everything. But like, I wanted to see you take it home, so that was that was awesome. Yeah, cool stuff. But cool uh, stuff. I I got so excited about UHL, I forgot to introduce you. So, <laughs> oh, <laughs> for, for the people who don't know you, um, you're what? a streamer, you're a content creator, UHL participant, and awesome rapper. Um, but hey, can you? Um, well, you know what? Hold on. Before we before we really get into the show, I just want to say a big thank you um, to uh, Wildcard uh, from our Patreon, who's the executive producer of the show. It's a it's a huge help. We couldn't do it without you, and we really um, appreciate you. So thank you, thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, anyways, um, let's let's jump right into it. So if uh, for those of our audience who aren't familiar with you, can you just give us a little bit of background? Yeah. So um, my name is Mike Lowe. Um, I played Hearthstone since about 2014. I want to say maybe a few weeks after Nox Ramos came out. So you know that whole meme Nox is out. I, like, <laughs> I really started playing around then. Um, I played a lot of Freeze Mage um, at that time, and maybe still at this point in time. Not a lot of people liked it. It wasn't popular. Not not a lot of board interactions. But that was my jam. I loved Freeze Mage. Uh, I come from a Dragon Ball Z background. A lot of players that I know played Magic. I played Magic as well, but I was playing a lot of local tournaments when I was younger, playing Dragon Ball Z. So when I first joined, you know, the Hearthstone world, my username was Blackrot. Um, at some point in time, somebody was confused. They thought it came off a certain way. So I was just like, you know what? I'll make it simpler for everybody so there's no confusion. I'll just use my real name. And then that's where I just kind of formed uh, Mike Lowe Streams. I had been a fan of Ziggy and Amaz. I started watching them a while ago. So from watching them, I was like, I want to stream. This seems cool. You can meet people, get a community, et cetera, et cetera. So I just made my name Mike Lowe Streams just to keep it simple. It's. I think, I mean, honestly, I think it's good branding to have the, um, you know, your same username across all your different platforms too so that people can find you really easy yes so you know it's the same at twitter it's the same at twitch and wherever else you want to be um it, it's good but i was wondering if you mm-hmm. had a different battle net tag we we ask people every time we have someone on uh we ask people like hey what's the history of your battle net tag because um there's usually a story behind it and uh and then you have um people who are boring like myself that just use my last name and, uh, <laughs> but uh well for it's, mine it's <laughs> so the original so black rot it came from me playing dragon ball z the card game um mm-hmm. you can select a hero and then within that hero you can select a tokuwaza you can also select a color so wait I, you can select a what it's tokuwaza oh, I... <laughs> so i'm sorry i know it, it's dating myself but <laughs> i'll have to type the word out so people can see how it's spelled but basically what it is is you're selecting the type of class you want to play. So imagine, I'll flip it into Hearthstone. Imagine you pick Jaina, but you want to use Shaman cards. So you'd be the Shaman Tokuwaza, but Jaina's hero power. I know that sounds crazy, but that's how Dragon Ball Z sounds, works. That sounds pretty pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. So, sounds like a ring uh, two months ago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly that. So I'll finish this. Where Black Rock came from, I always played Goku um, under the Black Tokuwaza. So they were like, so one day, this guy, JD, he was like, yo, you always play Goku. I'm going to call you Black Rot. You cool with that? And, like, people were like, I live in New Hampshire, so people were just kind of nervous. Like, uh, did he just say black? Talk to a black guy? You know? <laughs> That's how it really is here. So I was black. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I have noticed. Yeah. I was like, I just realized today. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, He's like, I'm going to call you Black Rot. He's like, you're always playing that Kakarot deck with the Black Tokuwaza. He's like, it just fits. And I was like, you know what? I'll stick with it. It's cool. So that ran through high school, through college, and then up and I, I always use that gamer tag up until like a year or two years ago. And you so must have been pumped when Black Rock Mountain came out. <laughs> yo, I didn't even think of that until like a year later. And I was like, yo, I should have I should have spun that in some way. I didn't even think of it. And then um, I kind of fell out the DBZ world, came back to hearing that there's a Dragon Ball Super and they have this Goku black character. And I'm like, what's going on, man? I was like, I should have coined that phrase or something. <laughs> oh, well, you missed out. But uh, I love hearing the story. I love the story. Yeah. Good times. Yeah, I, enjoy it. I enjoyed it as well. But like, I think most people probably know you 
as a uh, rap superstar Mike Lau, mo- mo- most most famous from all the nerfs. Am I right? Hey, when this song, hey, when this podcast drops, I'm gonna have two platinum singles out there. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but no, hey, the three of us, man, we got something special. We got some magic. Cause that all the nerfs, that was dope. And then this one coming out, this one's dope. Like, oh, I'm I'm so we, excited. We, we had a little bit more time to do this one, so it made it a little bit easier. Cause that last one, we. We literally threw the whole thing together in a in a couple of hours in one in one morning. And that was awesome. And uh, <laughs> I see what you're yeah. saying though. On this one, yeah, I had a couple of days to write lyrics, change some things out, and I was like, "Oh, I'm gonna say this. Ooh, Naga's dead. I'm gonna say this. Like, so much stuff, man. I loved it. Yeah, it's fun. It's always a pleasure working with you two. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Can I ask you guys? Um, oh yeah. Sorry. Sure. What's up? So. Well, Nate, you said your battle net name was from your last name. What about you, Craig? Uh, well, my battle net name is actually Into the Wild, so it's not that uh, not that original. What, what did it wait? And what did it used to be? Back in the day, it was actually Craig. I'm not gonna give exactly what it was, but it was my first name, my middle name, and then my date of birth, which I realize is kind of. Uh, it's like, oh hey guys, man! Can we get the last four digits of your social? <laughs> social, number, right? please. And your mom's maiden name. <laughs> Just hand your wallet over. <laughs> so I changed that. I, I realized like oh, man. Uh, it wasn't the best idea. So I'm like, I better change that. But it, it just I happened to do into the wild. I'm like, let's do into the wild, and I said, let's brand the crap out of it. So that's what I ended up going with. But yeah, I don't know why I would use my first name, middle name, and then your <laughs> wasn't the smartest. But neither am I. So. After the show, we'll have to uh, link up because we're not even friends on Battle.net. I just realized that. Oh, are we not? No. Oh, I feel like a real piece of jerk. Eh, it's all good. Jerk star called running out of me. <laughs> <laughs> Sein- a Seinfeld reference. Anyway, I'll, I just want bef- I want to cut off the interview for one minute just to say that right before the show, I forgot to tell you guys, I opened like the most – I can't. I, I don't think there'd be a better card for me to open from the new set. Mm-hmm. Golden Toki. Rad. Are you serious? Yeah. So Yo. The one wild card in the new set, and it was a That's gold version. So I love. And so she, mm-hmm. she, she give you a golden card too, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. I was just gonna say I love golden cards that give you goldens, but this one is special because Toki gives you a wild legendary. That is that's too clutch. Nice work. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be playing it in standard later today. I don't know if that. If that's a thing or not, but that's the plan. Don't bring your standard deck to wild. You'll lose. I said it in my verse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stay tuned for that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's continue with the interview, Nate. Hey, so what are you? What are your? What is your favorite Hearthstone card of all time? Or you could pick two if you want. But we we ask everybody, and it's it's fun. I'm curious. Okay, so for people listening, brace yourself, grab your chair, don't fall. When I first started playing, I opened a golden Ysera. I yep, and yeah, I think you can see where this is going. Uh, at the time, I was playing a lot of Magic. You know, Friday night Magic gatherings, people would come over. We'd have like ten to twelve people um, play. Like, was that Emperor mode, three on three or whatever? So that fell off. I discovered Hearthstone, and I was like, "Yo, I don't need people to be in my house to play this. I can play this any time of day." Mm-hmm. I'm like, "This is cool." I didn't realize how long I'd be playing because if I realized then, I wouldn't have dusted it. Aww. I dusted the golden Ysera because I wanted to get more cards. So, well, if it makes you feel better, I'll probably dust the golden Toki. Oh, I've dusted, I, I I opened up a golden darkness not that long ago and I dusted it too. So whatever. Mm. <laughs> hey, you know what? We got a new set dropping in like two months. Yeah. You save up all that dust and gold that you can. Exactly. So that you know you get all the new cards. So, I mean, yeah, we're a bunch of dirty dusters over here. At yeah. Google. <laughs> <laughs> so I do have two favorite cards. 2015 um, League of Explorers dropped, and I opened a uh, Nexus Champion Sarad. Ooh, I love that card. I understand RNG. I know there's more spells in the game now, so it's a less chance to get Fireball. But I cannot tell you how many times I would play Nexus Sarad, Hero Power. And a fireball would just pop out the nexus. And I'm just like, exactly. this card is sick. I'm like, are you sure it doesn't just spawn a fireball every time? Like, I just love that card. <laughs> there are times where, and I'm sure all of us have done this, whether you're new or old school like us. You play a card that has said RNG 
you play into it, the card comes out the portal, it gives you the win, or it gives you the card you need to stave off. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So too many times I played Nexus um, Champion and Inspire Fireball, Inspire Hex. You know what I'm saying? Inspire uh, Holy Nova. And I'm just like, yo, this guy is sick. There's never been one time where I played it and I got a bad card. I know it can happen, but maybe because I use them so sparingly, I'm just trying to keep that memory. <laughs> that card's dope. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I like it. So those are my two favorite Hearthstone cards of all time. I don't know if they'll make ones that will compare, at least in my heart, maybe, but those are the top two. Nothing. There's no third place, fourth close. Well, good. I'm a, I like a man who knows exactly what he wants, all right? I'm starting to sound like uh, I'm, I'm a, like a dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. So, um, yeah, that's cool. So, hmm. Wait, what about your card back? Is there a card back that you like? Ooh, favorite card back. You know, my favorite card back, um, I think it's one of the ones that I can't get because I started season four. Um, I can't picture it in my mind. I think it's like a red Pandarian one or something, like season three. I, th- I think it's like the Lower Walker Cho one. It's got like a cloud on it or something like that. I'm really bad at explaining this. Right? What are you using right now? Oh, the only card back you ever need, the classic one. <laughs> <laughs> little Hearthstone flavor text. Um, but I guess my favorite would be my original one, um, Ice Crown Citadel from season four. Nice. nice. Um, I do like that pumpkin one from Halloween 2014. What's another cool one? The one they just Man, released, I, um, it's got like a grassy back. I think it's from last month or the month before. Yeah, that card, it's really nice. Yeah. There are a lot of cool ones. Uh, that so ge- the pan- yeah, go ahead. That, mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, the no, Pandaria one is the, the season one. Yeah, exactly. Back in April yep. uh, 2014. See, I, I was playing back when Nax was around also, but... Um, Man, I didn't know, like, I was a filthy casual, and I didn't realize, like, you had to hit rank 20, get the card back, and there was, I missed out on several, um, yeah, I missed out on a handful of them, I feel bad. I always uh, wish that the cards were kind of positioned different, so that the card backs would showcase more, because if my opponent isn't using a discover, I really don't care, I don't care what the card backs are, period, but... I don't just. I wish the decks were kind of laid flat instead of like standing up sideways. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it'd be nice to see them. Yeah, know. if you're gonna make us do all this stuff to get them, like you should show them better in the game. But that's all good. Yeah, that always did bother me. I don't understand why they don't have it, uh, have it facing like you know, like Magic where the decks just flat on the surface. That'd exactly. Nice. Yeah. Oh well, we can't always get what we want. We can't get everything. Me, I- Mm-hmm. I should say one of the things that's pretty cool about Wild that um, if we're talking about the UI and not necessarily the decks, but mm-hmm. um, as we get different game boards, like when we play Wild Ladder, you see all of them. Whereas the people playing standard, like you, you don't see Nax Ramus game board, you know, or League of Explorers game board. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't realize. So you play Wild Ladder, you see all of them. I didn't even think of that. Okay, good. That's a good point, man. It's kind of fun. We are spoiled rotten over here. Yeah, cause yeah, cause in Wild, um, I love that Nax Ramus game board. I didn't know this until literally six months ago that a spider pops out on that bottom left. Yep. How, how long have you guys known that? Oh, uh, I don't know. I get like the, uh, I I tend to play super quick, and then I click on everything while I'm waiting for my opponent to take their turn, and. Uh, you must be clicking a I, lot. Yeah, I mean, I started clicking everything. Well, and then and then it became like a, um like a puzzle to solve like play through and try to figure out like all the different little things that you can click on Mm -hmm. um and now every time like a new set comes out they drop a new board and i just start clicking on everything to see what the interactions are yeah when i first found out that you can launch the space shuttle um or that you can make the volcano erupt i was like wait what Mm -hmm. what spicy (laughs) sorry i couldn't tell you a thing about any of the game boards it's just not my uh it's not where i'm looking I love the game boards, especially that, um, like you said, that space shuttle one. I do that every time. I'll go over to the little uh, <laughs> transporter thing. It pops out like an apple or whatever fruit it is or a fish, something random. Yeah. Um. Uh, is it? I'm, I'm forgetting the name of the game board, but the one with the rock launcher, the, the catapult, excuse me. You can put oh, a rock yeah. in the catapult. 
I didn't know. To your opponent. <laughs> yeah, if you aim it right, if you listen, you can hear someone in the background be like, "Ow!" or like a, a wolf get hit, like it whimpers. It's so funny, yeah, man. That's I'm like, rad. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah. I play with the sound off a lot of the times. That's. that's I, awesome. I hear that a lot. Um, I don't know if it's just a thing that I do having the sound on with everything, but I heard someone say they play with the sound off, and I'm like, "Oh, dude, you're missing out on some funny quotes, board interactions." But I guess focusing on the game with the sound off will get you higher ranks. So. That's why I'm showing it. Depends. At. See, I mean, like, I like it. And then, in fact, that's one of the things that sold me on the game early on was that um, I loved the sounds. Like, the game itself is really whimsical. Thank you, and Commander so, Root, for the Twitch funny. follow. Appreciate and it. And I like that it can be, like, a competitive um, game but still have all that flavor. Mm -hmm. um, and so I like it. I mean, I played with the sound on for a good couple of years. And I. it's just that now when I play, a lot of times, like, I'm listening to a podcast or I'm listening to an audio book or I'm watching Netflix in the background. Um, is, is why I'm not playing with the sound on. Yeah, but. I was going to say, I play with the sound off all the time, too, for the same reason as I'm always watching Netflix or listening to a podcast while I play. Gotcha. I imagine if I was not doing that stuff, I would probably do better. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah when, I, when I went to Legend, I don't think I was playing as much, uh, playing as, or listening to podcasts as much when I played. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. That's hey, life. so we got mm -hmm. uh, we got some mutual friends. You know Spivey and Ziggy. Um, yeah, was, like small world. But how did you meet those guys? Just out of curiosity. So um, Ziggy, Sarah, I met Ziggy um, when I first started watching. Well, when I was first introduced to Twitch, I want to say like January 2015. Um, I first came across a Moz. I didn't realize I saw his name on a magic card, Jason Chan. And then I saw him online, like a Google thing, and then it said he was a Twitch streamer. So, like, my first introduction to this whole world, I'm thinking, like, this guy designs magic cards and he's running Hearthstone. I'm like, yo, this dude's amazing. So, that's why you'll always hear, like, I love Priest, because he always played Priest. And he was always like, when we get board clears, we'll make it great, guys. Don't worry. So, I was down with Priest. I kept scrolling through the Twitch channel of Hearthstone, and I saw Ziggy streaming. And um, her title, ironically enough, was uh, Wild Child. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, this chick seems crazy. She seems fun. Let me check it out. See what it's about. And lo and behold, she's like the coolest person ever. She's playing like late 19, like late 90s, early 2000s music. So I'm like, ah, memories of being 15. Like, you know, like some good music. Um, she's great with her chat. She interacts. Um. So right when I jumped in, um, you know, she would talk back, talk about her plays. She was always playing Druid. She would own that. At the moment, she wasn't a great player, but I think she is. And she just seemed like a fun person. So down the line, I remember seeing her tweet and then Spivey tweeting. I came across Spivey. This might be weird, but he was tweeting about, um, I believe, Arizona Cardinals for football, like a fantasy football thing. Ah. Uh. And then mm -hmm. I followed him because of that. But then I, and then he started, not started, but I saw one of his Hearthstone tweets. And I was like, oh, snap. I saw his ranks. I saw the people that he was connected to. And just in my mind, not that I connected him and Ziggy at the time, but I was like, this might, I was like, this might be a good dude to follow just to get involved in this community. Because I saw, like, how many people, like, responded to him. Like, um, whenever he would tweet something or have an opinion on something, there was just a bunch of likes, a bunch of comments, and, like, basically, Spivey, to me, like, he had a following. Like, he's, like, a leader in the community. He still is, of course. Um, and I remember, I don't remember the exact timeline, but I recall that I think Spivey and Ziggy were, like, meeting up or moving in together, something to that effect. But um, it's all starting to blur now. But at one point, I remember that they had moved in together, and then from there, they just kind of been this dynamic duo, you know what I'm saying? Oh yeah, yeah. Like me and Nate, a lot of us, a lot of us <laughs> call us the dynamic duo. Oh, of course. Now we're the terrific trio. No, I'm just kidding. Oh yeah, we're <laughs> we're the wild trio. We're the wild trio, boy. <laughs> but yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, meeting two people in different instances, and then they end up being together and living together, and then moving to a different state and still staying together. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love those guys. I can tell, um, like, they, it's a real love there because, like, they met through a game, but, like, what they have carries beyond the game. You know what I'm saying? 
Whoa, Cortana open. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> what are you doing here, Cortana? Yeah. I didn't even say her name. But anyway. But yeah, that's how I met uh, Ziggy and Spivey. I met him through his uh, fantasy football tweets and then Ziggy from her stream but years ago. So I, I've been talking to them for a couple years now. About to be three years. Wow. When I think about it. It's a long time. Time goes by so fast. Wow, man. Yeah, that's crazy. And we've had all three of you on the show now, so that's exciting. You guys yeah. all have in common as well. Yeah, I went back and listened to it because Ziggy told me she was on, so I had to listen to that one definitely. And then they had me on their show, so that was pretty cool. It was, I was sad because you guys know how that show goes. At the 20-minute mark, ready? <clears throat> I'm going to cue Chris. So thank you for listening to 1600 Dust. You can blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and when I'm sitting there live... I'm like, I, I wanted to blur it out. Like, no, wait, but there's more. But I contained myself. I was well behaved, but I was sad that it's only a 20 minute show. Like, they have magic over there, man. That, that stuff is fun. They, they do. And, and one of the things that I love about their show is that it's, I mean, it's literally like a bunch of friends sitting around at a table talking, and mm -hmm. it's really enjoyable to listen to. And my only complaint was that it's too short. Yeah. And, and Spivey <laughs> says, you got to leave him wanting more. And, uh, but like I was on the show, um, and uh, I remember, I, I, you know, I'm like mid sentence, and Chris is like, "And you've been listening to 1600 Dust, and you can find us at 1600dust.com." Uh, I was like, "Chris, uh, I'm not done yet." <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hold up, hold up. But no. I, it was fun. It's, but it's good. I mean, I, sometimes I can't listen Wiser to. Your words have never been spoken, and you heard that on Into the Wild. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I was Dust I knew that was coming. I was waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, 600 Dust is a great show. And they do leave you wanting more, which is sad sometimes. I'll be at work listening to them. And it's like 20 minutes goes by and you got to change your show again. You're like, oh, man, I, I just wish that, that I could listen to more of them. But oh, well, such is life. It's good. Sometimes I don't have three hours to listen to a podcast. You know? Yeah, it's true. It's so sad, mate. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So you got a couple kids, Mike? Yes, I have two kids, uh, one of each. So my daughter, Sophia, she is 10 years old. And my son, Caleb, recently turned nine years old. So I am at the whatever checkpoint you want to say. I have younger siblings. I grew up the oldest of four. I always get uh, comments when people see my daughter. You know, we're out in a store or out at a park, walking around doing whatever. Oh, she's so beautiful. Then they'll lean in. Ready? <clears throat> you better watch out. She's a pretty one. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, you don't think I know this? I'm ready. There's no one more prepared than I. I was like, like, am I the only one who thinks that's the, who, who who thinks that's weird when people say that about about someone's daughter? It is kind of uh, strange. <laughs> it's like yeah, I don't want. I don't know. I mean, I only have a son, but yeah, I I think I I would probably not be real thrilled if someone told me that. Yeah. Yeah, she's going to be hot. Dude, she's four. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I oh, man. No, no, no. no I, I, listen, if there's one thing I love about you, Craig, your honesty, your bluntness, like how funny you are, like let it fly, man. You're right about that because like I'm just like, are you like a, a weirdo? Like, like are you like <laughs> what, how, what kind of eye do you have for my kid? Like get out of here. I was like, I'll exercise these thoughts now. I was like, I'll protect in, fr in front of her. Like. <laughs> Step oh, back. Man. It's just weird. But um, obviously, appreciate the comments. She'll be appreciative as she gets older. But with kids, you know, you got to with, you know, with kids, you have to, like, make sure you're raising them the right way. They have the right values, et cetera. So they don't grow up to be evil people or bad people in the world. So that's my goal with my kids, just to steer them away from the stuff that I was involved in you know, when I was younger and make sure they're focused in school. Um, my daughter is like a genius at math. She's great at spelling. And my son, Caleb, he loves to read. So I'm just pushing those things. Because when I was younger, I had no interest. I'll be the first one to say that. I had no interest in school. I just want to play basketball and hang out with friends. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. You're raising them right, dude. Yeah. No, no, Mike, you were on a podcast called The Clock, if I'm not mistaken, which our very own Nate Wolf was on episode six. Yes. But are you, are you not with them anymore? No, I am not with The Clock podcast anymore. Oh, what happened? So there were just some creative differences. Um, some people had some different ideas. I had some ideas of my own. And just in the end, they started to clash. So I felt best if we just went our separate ways. 
that way they can do what they like to do and I can continue to do what I wanted to do. Um, don't want to, you know, spill any blood, make any, burn any bridges, but I'm just looking to basically expand my creativity in Hearthstone, in Twitch, and just in this whole digital space period. Um, you mean this, this digital thing we call life? The digital world. <laughs> yeah, so no ill will, no bad blood. It's just, you know, time's up. Got to move on and get this thing going for myself. Because I will be I having see, one. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I will be having uh, more projects coming out. Um, but... Just to answer the question, creative differences, they went their way, I'm going my way, and you guys can stay tuned and see what I got coming out. Well, it's Very like cool. I always it's like I always tell you, Mike, you gotta go your own way. <laughs> go your own way. Yeah, my voice doesn't go that high, so I, <laughs> I would try, but I'm live and we're recording, so I don't want to embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait until the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, after we cut it. You can embarrass hey. yourself then. Then I'll hit that Mariah Carey note. <laughs> oh yeah, I would. I if you can do that, man, I'd be impressed. Shoot, <clears throat> Craig probably do it before me. This dude is so uh, musically inclined, Craig. Dude. And I... <laughs> is that Mariah Carey? Or is that Whitney Houston? That was Whitney. That's Whitney. Hey, still. It's Whitney, bitch. It's Whitney. <laughs> <laughs> is that Whitney or is that Britney? <laughs> Britney. <laughs> it's all good. Remix it. <laughs> Dude, when I mean, you said I, before you segue, I, hey, I'm gonna just put okay, in the request right now that I, for our next song, I will always play wild, okay? <laughs> yeah. By Craig Houston. <laughs> you, can, you can hear me riff on that song on the Happy Hearthstone episode 104, which you can find on IntoTheWildHS.com. Excellent. Ooh, I that like is that. A, yes, yes, yes. Um, we yes, we're building a website and it's live right now. It's a work in progress, but okay. uh, it's it's live and it's there. I would love people to go check it out and kind of give us your some feedback and thoughts and stuff. But uh, one of the cool things that we have um, every time that Craig or myself have been on another podcast, we've got their episodes linked up on the website, so you can stream them directly from the website or mm -hmm. you can download them. Um, so yeah, that's up there. Heck yeah. yeah, that's exciting. There'll be even more to come too. Oh yes. I'm ready for that. But, uh, hey, I before we wrap up the interview, I heard that you have a secret project in the works, and I was hoping that we could like unveil it on our show. Oh yeah, drum roll, please. So, as you just recently stated, I was on a previous podcast, but big <laughs> news being announced today. Having tweeted it, having leaked information, I made sure the people that knew about it stayed tight-lipped. So there's only three of us. <laughs> <laughs> So I will be starting a new podcast. I will be Yay. podcasting with Ziggy Sarah. Ba, 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 ba. The name of the podcast is ZG Talk Radio. Wow. Is it about Hearthstone? So it is going to be a podcast about connecting. When I say that, it's going to be about me and Ziggy reconnecting over the past week. We'll be doing weekly episodes. They'll come out on Mondays. Also, we're going to catch up on what's been happening in Hearthstone. We're going to discuss parenthood. We're both parents. We both have two kids. And also, we're going to mix in some uh, Twitch affiliate talk. We're both Twitch streamers. On top of that, we want to blend in some you know, pop, pop culture stuff, any hot topics of the week, whatever's happening in life. And as the show goes on, we want to start bringing in guests and use this podcast to build a community and bring in the friends that we made over the years. So I want the focus of the show to be a podcast about connecting. It's like a friendship podcast, you know? I don't want to just, like I don't want to limit it just to Hearthstone. I understand it's a saturated market. So when I was thinking of the show idea, I didn't want to come from that start point. I wanted to think of what I want the show to be, let's say in two to three years. Oh yeah, no, no, two two people talking, uh, catching up and stuff, and yeah, I, I like the idea. And a guy and a girl, you don't see that too often. It's, mm -hmm. uh, I'm excited. I'm excited for. It. I'm gonna check it out, and you'll you'll be all over wherever I can find podcasts. Yes, we will be everywhere you can find podcasts, and we are lucky enough to have the best, most amazing graphic designer in the world, 
none other than, than Nate Wolf. Oh, thank you, sir. That's so very kind. Today on Twitter, I'm going to uh, reveal the uh, logo, set up the Twitter page, et cetera, et cetera. We're really excited to do this. Um, the first few weeks, um, just expect, you know, some goofiness, a little rough edges. But as time goes on, it'll get smoother. And then that's when we can start bringing guests on. So you two are first on the list. Just know that, by the way. Bum, 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 Sweet. Bum. Yeah. That's awesome. No, I, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be fun. And and like you said, I think the Hearthstone um, podcast world is super oversaturated. And that's what I – I mean, that's usually what I tell people when, when they ask me for advice about, hey, we're doing a podcast. And so the advice always is, well, do something different mm-hmm. because there's – you know, but – um, it, it's it'll be fun, you know, to talk about things other than pod or Hearthstone. Hearthstone is cool, but um, you know, parents and what's going on, and just having two friends catch up. Like, I, I will listen for sure, and um, I'm really excited about it. So let's see, I'll two of li- our two of our favorite li- people. I'll listen even more than Nate, just so you know. Yeah. <laughs> D- double downloads. Yeah, I listen, I listen twice. I listen on my computer and on my phone. Ooh, okay, okay. Not a tablet? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I think it's going to be really fun and exciting because we are two friends who met through Hearthstone, but our friendship transcends and goes beyond Hearthstone. Like, if we both stopped playing Hearthstone, we'd still be, like, best friends. So that's where I feel like the magic and the energy comes from. And I'm not worried about, you know, being um, pigeonholed or cornered into a Hearthstone podcast. But at the same time, I don't want to come off being, like, negative, like, oh, we're not doing a Hearthstone podcast. Because I know it's saturated out there, but the focus was to just be two friends who were connecting and bringing people in and just having a friendly discussion every week. Well, you heard it here. You heard it first here, folks. World that, premiere. Yeah, and Mike Lau and Ziggy Sarah will not be playing Hearthstone anymore. Yep, we quit. It's over. <laughs> take my dust, take my collection. No, I'm just kidding. I need that. I need them wild cards, boy. I was saying we should have a, a, a new podcast called 40 Dust. <laughs> every time i open a pack that's what it is. somebody said that they were like um because i kind of alluded to it but they were like yo if you do a show if if it's with ziggy or, or spivey you should do 40 dust you know um <laughs> just like you don't want to take you don't you don't want to take away idea, but... i know it, it was it was just it was like funny in the moment they were like you don't want to do 1600 just do 40 dust because that's what most packs are it was just too funny let's do like 400 dust like at least be epic yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, no, I was opening the curtain in my room. It's dark in here. No, you're right. It should be uh, 400 dust, at least being epic. So yeah, true. Right. So true. But yeah, I'm excited for that. ZG Talk Radio coming soon. We're going to launch cool. in July. I'm going to do, I've donned myself the uh, Black Ben Brood. Anytime I do something that someone else has done, I just kind of put the word black in front of it. So I'm announcing the announcement. Are you black? I. I, I am. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> I'm the Black Knight. I need, I need to bring this part up because uh, you guys are acting all friendly, friendly here. Yes. But I know that deep down there's a uh, little attention brewing. <laughs> let's talk UHL a little bit, guys. Nate beat Spivey last week to get to the playoff. And then Mike Lau, you crushed Ridiculous Hat into 1600 Dust. So I guess I got to ask you that. Who's fighting next week? For the United Conference, it is going to be Mike Lowe versus Nate Wolf. It's going to be a rematch. We have a rematch. Yeah, that That'll be me. fun. I'm excited. I do want to apologize to Nate. Um, him and Ferris Biscuit, I was unaware, <laughs> started the draft last Sunday at 421 p.m. And I wasn't <laughs> aware the whole week. <laughs> I, you know, he wanted to start it really early, but it's it's funny because the draft, like, it could have gone in, the, it, like, a long, drawn-out thing, or it could be quick. Like, Spivey and I did a draft that took all of about five minutes, um, you know, back and forth on Discord, so I, it doesn't matter to me. Okay. Uh, but he, he, I know he was kind of anxious to get started, but uh, it's all good. I'm not in any rush at all, so. Yeah, last night after I won, I went into Discord and uh, did two more picks. So, just so you know, I... <laughs> I'm drafting. I didn't even know that was up there. So okay, cool. Because Ferris, <laughs> yeah, Derek had messaged me. It was either a text or a direct message on Twitter, and he said he'll start 
separate chats based on who wins or regardless of who wins with me and you or you and hat and i thought he meant through twitter so that's why i didn't even think of discord until last night when they were like get on discord for the post game and then i see the left bar of tw- uh, discord all the red notifications a bunch of group chats and i'm like dude i've been gone the whole week like holy crap <laughs> yeah hey you just got internet back that's I mean, yeah i just moved myself and man we had no internet for a good two weeks, maybe three weeks, and that was awful. Dude, it's just... rough. Not to come off, you know, pompous and arrogant, but, like, when you're in this space, when you're trying to create content, it's your livelihood, it's your, it's your blood, so you need it. So, for the, was it last Thursday, they were supposed to come, and then Comcast didn't come until this past week. So, they were How just rude. like, oh, well, you know, we understand, et cetera, et cetera. I'm like, no, the hell you don't understand, because yeah. if you did... You would have kept the agreement. I had called them the week prior to it. So to lay this out for you, I gave them an eight-day heads up. So where did it fall? Do you know what I'm saying? So that's where I was frustrated. And, like, last Thursday on Twitter, I, I blew up. And, like, I kept getting DMs from Comcast Cares. Oh, we saw your tweet. Anything we can do to help? I'm like, yeah, send someone over here and get my internet set up so I can get back to streaming. <laughs> Back to making content, getting my Hearthstone deck codes out there. Like, I can't do anything. That is the worst thing about customer service. Like, you can call them all week, complain, 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 and they don't give a shit. And then you put out a tweet, and next thing you know, it's like, oh, what can we do to help you? What can we do to help you? Yeah, sometimes you got to use that to your advantage, though. I mean, you got to know when to play that card. But, um, you know, you, you try to work it out, and they're not willing to help. You put them on blast, whatever. Yeah, and to be honest... um. I didn't do it with the intention of if I tweet this, then they're going to correct the problem or see it. I literally had a moment where I was just mad and I was like, I'm going to tweet. I'm mad about this. The only people who would actually get me are people from Twitch, Twitter, you guys, you know, the content creators. Mm -hmm. If I went to Facebook and complained, no one cares because Facebook is full of people I went to high school with, college with, you know, I know in person, but they're not in this space content Hearthstone space um but i can see in hindsight what you guys are saying if you do said thing then said customer care will message you hi this is mark we saw your tweet what can we do to help but what you should have done was kept the appointment you took the payment so why didn't you show up so that's where i just blew up and then after the fact after internet got set up they kept uh messaging me hi we see that uh your audio is all set, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And I'm just like, you guys mess up the first time, so I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> like, I'm not so going to. Give, give me a month for free for my inconvenience. Yeah, because they really well, wanted see... me to do what you said, Nate, and go back to Twitter and tweet that it's fixed. And I'm like, I'm like, wait, me, the, the kid from New Hampshire, really bothered you guys? Like, like you want me to go out there and say that you fixed it? Uh, No. All set. <laughs> no, see, they that happened to us. We have out here Comcast as well, um, Xfinity, and and it was crazy because we, you know, you set up service to start on a certain day, and then same deal. Like I, so the, I mean, a, a same kind of thing happened to me where they were supposed to supposed to turn on on whatever day it was, and I got the kit and they did the self install and they start billing you, you know, that day because it's quote unquote turned on. Uh, but our house had been vacant for you know a long time uh, before we moved in, and so they had turned off the connection. And so even though I did the self install, it wasn't working, and I had to get them to send a dude out, and it took you know ten days or, or something to get the appointment. Wow. Meanwhile, I'm being billed for internet the whole time, um, you know, even though because technically it's turned, you know, I, I yeah. have service, but uh, I don't, you know, because the house like it's turned off at the box. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and then we get this statement in the mail that they've been billing me for this uh, extra week and a half that has been turned off. You know, it's irritating. That's frustrating, man. So do you have Comcast business class? I don't know. My wife set it up. It's uh, I mean, we got the Internet that's the second from the top. Um, but it works. I mean, it works pretty well. Mm-hmm. It's pretty fast. No, 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 no judgment. I just learned this through this process. What they told me. So uh-huh. I had, it sounds like you have a uh, residential. So I was Probably. on residential. I don't know. I, I don't know. Cause I, she set it all up. All I told her is I get it fast enough that we can play games and stream stuff. 
Yeah, what they said to me, um, when they botched the set update, they told me I can do in self install, all the kind of same thing you did, have my own box. They messed up the date. So I told them, like, listen, um, I use the internet for business. Um, I, I don't know if you guys know this. Sometimes I'll do um, articles or pieces for a, a local website and I get paid for it. So I told this woman, I'm like, aside from me doing Twitch streaming, I got my affiliate. I use the internet to write articles for work. So she's like, oh, well, you qualify for business class. And what happened was she was like, we can send someone out faster because what they were going to do when I was on the residential plan, they were going to send someone out like July 7th. And I'm like, what? yo, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, hell no. Uh, this one, this one, a black came out. I'm like, hell no. I'm like, you are not. You ain't playing me like that. So she switched it to a business class, and then they got a faster date. How much extra are they charging you for that? So mm-hmm. before I had, um, what do you want to call it, Xfinity Blast, paying about $70 a month. I upgraded to the business class, and it's, I want to say, like $110, 115 I understand it's a $40 bump, but they told me, if there were ever any issues, it's 24 hour maintenance, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this internet speed is actually faster than Xfinity Blast, I guess. Uh, not that I guess I actually know this, I can see the difference. Um, but I haven't had any connection issues whatsoever. I used to have problems before, but um, I guess being a business class customer, you're at a higher priority than residential because they, they see it as a luxury or people just chilling watching netflix or doing nothing but i was like no i was like no lady like i make money using the internet so get over here like, <laughs> you should you should make an appointment with them for like five in the morning and then just not answer the door <laughs> <laughs> i'm asleep leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe don't do that i'm just being, like salty because uh, the same thing i mean the same thing happened to me it was irritating but yeah, I didn't experience anyway. the link you did, but you know how it is going without internet. But yeah, we all know how oh, it is. Oh, dude, yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun. So hey, wait, um, mm-hmm. you uh, do you want to t- what what are you writing article wise? So the uh, I thought I saw you post something about it the other day, and I never mm-hmm. got a chance to read it. But if you want to like throw it out there, yeah. So um, I'll post it on my Twitter once again, so people listening to this can check it out. I'll put it in a pinned tweet. I wrote for a local website. It's called Manchester Inc. Link. It's a hyper-local news site. Any and everything that happens in this town, um, it, it'll get posted to the site, recorded, documented. The woman who runs the site, her name is Carol Robodeau. I actually met her five years ago when I was a part of a BNI group. You guys are familiar with BNI, right? No. Uh, no. So, uh, Business Networking International. It's a group of entrepreneurs business owners, etc., looking to network with other people that are in other fields that can bring you more business. So what I used to do five years ago was manage other companies' social media accounts. I used to do their email marketing, um, promotions for them, etc., etc., build websites. So I met Carol okay. at this networking group that I had set up. Um, I knew about her for weeks prior to that. I didn't think she'd actually show. So when she did, it was to me like, like a celebrity showed up because she was from a different town. She, she set up uh, a website there, um, YouTube's there, etc. So she's kind of like, in New Hampshire, things are really slow here. They're not like progressive. I'm not trying to come off negative, but that's just how things are. When I saw her online, I was like, that's the one I need to connect to because she gets it. She gets social media. She gets the future. She gets technology. So, um, yeah, so long story short... When I got Twitch affiliate, um, she was happy about that. And she had asked me if I could do articles for her website about Twitch because Twitch all of a sudden started becoming mainstream based on, you know, when Ninja played with uh, Drake like a month, two months ago or whatever. So that's how it got on her radar. And she's like, hey, Mike, you do Twitch, right? And I'm like, yes, I do. What's up? She was like, would you want to be a writer for the site um, based on Twitch articles? And I was like, no problem. And then from there, I kind of spun it into other things. So any task that she needs to like delegate, um, if someone sends her a story or an idea that needs to be written, I'll do that for her. So I'm trying to expand it beyond just the Twitch articles and become like a main writer for the site, taking care of any tasks that she, can, she needs done. So that way she can be out in the field, 
pulling in more contacts, more sponsors, and not sitting at home writing when she should be running the site. You know what I'm saying? Being out there, being the face. Yeah, no, that's cool. I like that. That's, that's interesting. Yeah. I, I didn't see this any of this coming. You know, it's crazy how all this worked out for me just starting to play Hearthstone. Like, all these connections and people and things that I'm doing. It really all spawned from Hearthstone. Yeah, really. It's uh, one of those weird things seeing here. Like, if it wasn't for Hearthstone, I wouldn't have a podcast. Yeah, seriously. It's cool, man. I'm really enjoying it. You guys said... um. You were making a website, or it's in development still? I'm going to check it out. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, that would probably be a good time to hop into the news right now. Then, yeah, uh, in the news this week, we'll start with a little uh, self-promotion. Is that We mentioned it earlier, but we have an Into the Wild website now. It's intothewildhs.com, and it's pretty nice. Like, I was surprised. Nate, Nate did pretty much everything. Like That's what uh, we've been putting the money for with the patreon towards so far is this website mm-hmm. and uh yeah right now we have all our episodes are gonna are I, I don't know if they're all up there yet or not but i know that they're in the process of all going up we're putting uh links to stuff that's on the patreon up there we have uh, uh one of the cool features is that any podcast that we've been featured on you can listen to right there and like so like Ooh. we have the have your hearthstone up there we have we, we have all the podcasts we've been on uh like that. 1600 dust the clock everything and then, uh, mm-hmm. other than that, right now, uh, we don't have much else. We have a league link there, but don't get too excited because it hasn't started yet. But, uh, yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely the place to go <laughs> to, you know, get on it first. It's a nice place. Oh, and Nate has articles up there, too, that he writes. I'm going to try as well, but I'm not a good writer, but maybe I can do it. Yeah, awesome. I got a couple people lined up to try to help with it also. I've been fighting with the... Uh, internet people because the way that they've got it set up is like you can give people authority as a quote unquote contributor um, where they can write articles but you have to give them certain permissions under the website like and you got to pay extra for it if you want extra people and I don't want to pay extra for it um, but anyways it, it should be pretty cool uh, but it's fun I mean I, I'd love to hear some feedback on it um, it's definitely in the works but um it can give you a better feel for what we're all about and what we got coming. Um, there is a league in the works. Not quite ready to unveil it yet, but there's a master plan. I'm excited. So, yeah. I'm staying tight-lipped. I won't say a word. It's a cool idea. This league is uh, it's interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you guys are really going to like it. Nate, it's the league I'm thinking of, right? It's the League of Explorers? <laughs> Nate! Nate! <laughs> 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 anyway... Um, yeah, so how about this week's Tavern Brawl, guys? The uh, the chess brawl, <laughs> the less friendly game of chess. I get- had fun with this, actually. I don't, I, I have not liked the Tavern Brawls for a long time, and I thought this one was pretty dope, so. Yeah, it was cool. What'd you go with? Okay, so Wicked Good and I were, like, bouncing ideas off each other on, on Twitter, and we were like, okay, wait a minute, like, what could we do? Hmm, Axe Flinger. Oh, Grim Patron. Oh, Armor, you know, uh, armor smith, frothing berserker, and and kind of ended up making like a enrage self damage blast. And we threw in black howl gunspire, uh, just doing random damage, everything. And it was, it was fun. It was really fun. I love that. I want to do that now. Uh, so that's I. I tried a bunch of different combos, um, and I learned the hard way that you can buff your little chess pieces, and it doesn't change their attack. They they do one damage no matter what. No matter if they, you know, I was goofing around with like the inner fire combo. It does does absolutely nothing. No, uh, it's not a uh, book of specters isn't as good as I thought it was going to be in this brawl because uh, turns out a pretty high ratio of your deck is spells. Mm. That bummed me out. I, I tried Archmage Arugula and that didn't, didn't do too didn't do too well for me. Drawing extra checks pieces, you know. Shadow Word Horror works pretty well. Yeah, I know. Pri- I think Priest is probably the most powerful way to go, because uh, Holy Nova is just disgusting in this brawl. Holy Nova is super good, and Mind Blast is good. Oh, what's um, that? The two mana deal gain six health for everything. Oh, Divine yes. Very good in this brawl. Yeah, uh, pre- I think pre. Did you play any of this, Mike? I haven't, but I am literally writing down all these tips you guys are giving. I haven't had time <laughs> since what did it come on Wednesday at noon. Yeah, I haven't had the chance yet, but I do recognize this brawl. I'm looking at an image of it. It was released before, right? Well, well so here's the difference. Well, you can say Craig. Yeah. No, no, you go ahead, Nate. 
So it it's like the chess game from uh, One Night in Karazhan. Yeah. Except um, you get to add five cards from your collection to your deck. Oh. Uh, so it's chess plus you get to add a few cards to it. Oh. Um, okay. And okay. so you could, depending on what you add, can can kind of ch- twist it up a little bit. Um, I don't know. For me, like I usually try to do the tavern brawl like right when it comes out, because when they do, every once in a while they'll do one of these stupid ones that that's broken. And I want to get in before everyone finds out, you know, the broken combo, and it's not fun anymore. Yeah. <laughs> uh, jump in and get my forty dust and jump back out. But uh, this one's been fun, so. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'm mean, gonna have to go back in. I don't know how I didn't think of the, uh, the warrior stuff with making damage matter. I like that. Yeah. It's yeah. cool because it's hard. I mean, you can only target your opponent's stuff based on your actual cards that you play. Um, or your the placement of your chess pieces, and so it, it's difficult. Like you can place a frothing berserker that you know way on the far edge that can't be touched by stuff. I mean, they get huge. It's, mm. it's pretty fun. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely I'll, playing this. I gotta try this now. Did you say you played Gromani Berserker? Five mana two seven. I did not. Um, I might play that one. Yeah, Axe Flinger was my favorite. It was so fun because mm. he get, keeps getting pinged for one and flinging what was it two of the face each yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, that one sounds cool. Same with the tower, like you said. The I'll... only problem with the tower is it costs eight, and so by the time you know you get to it, but you play like the like bishop card or whatever that heals, and so it keeps doing damage, and then you heal it. It's pretty yeah, cool. I was gonna say live a little, Nate. I love Tavern Brawl because all the cards are available. You know what I'm saying? Like people who try to stay away from wild or are afraid of it can at least play some tavern brawls and use their wild cards you know what i'm saying yeah you know what's been really cool lately is that some of the like the people that have been developing the brawls from blizzard have been responding on on uh twitter yeah with like some design insights and stuff Mm -hmm. and so and and i for the life of me i don't know the guy's name um and maybe someone can email us or 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 tweet it or something but um it was pretty cool because we noticed uh, myself and some others noticed when we were building uh, this week's tavern brawl that a lot of times, like if there are cards that they don't want you to use, they just won't be available. Like they disappear from your collection. And instead, this time, there's actually banned cards. And so when you're flipping through your collection, like there's a big red, um, like a banner covering the card, and then it says banned. And so you you're not able to use any of the death knights. You're not able to use um, any of the hero cards like Hagatha. Mm. Um, and then they also banned um, devolve and evolve or whatever unstable evolution. Yeah. Um, you can't use because it's it mess up the chess pieces. I like that. That's oh, and that's that's interesting. And so yeah, someone I think it was Highlung or someone else m- maybe uh, commented on it like, hey, what you know in the past these would just disappear if you couldn't use them. And and it was like the dev that responded and said, "Oh yeah, we uh, we did that because uh, we don't want people to f- worry that there were like missing cards from the collection. We wanted you to know that we you can't use it and it's intentional and not that you're missing the card." And I actually think that's pretty cool. I just had never seen it before. Uh, but I think a lot of times they use these tavern brawls to test um, interactions and and new features for like the coming expansions and stuff. And so it makes you think, like, oh. You know, or someone had mentioned—I don't remember who it was anymore. I'm, I'm bad about that. But somebody had mentioned, like, "Hey, with the banned cards idea, you know, maybe that's something that they're working on for their upcoming like in-game tournament mode, where you could have a tournament and say, hey, banned cards, you can't use this card, you can't use this other card.' Um, yeah, it's a pretty fun tournament. So that does sound cool. Hmm. Anyways. <laughs> I don't know. Isn't that uh, tournament mode supposed to be happening this year, right? I mean, yeah. we're halfway through the year. <laughs> you said this year. Yeah, December 25th, 2018. <laughs> <laughs> well, they got six months left. I mean, They even said it won't have a... They, I think they said it wouldn't have a ban system in it. Uh, uh, well, who knows? Who knows? I, but I also know that they're going to start out with like a beta and then let people kind of test use it. And so we'll see. I mean, I, I assume it will evolve um, as we... Uh, like unless, over time, we use um, it unless it's banned. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my God. Get it? Evolve. <laughs> I messed up the chess pieces. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. 
<laughs> Slow clap right there. Slow clap. I, I really committed to that bit. Um, <laughs> do we have any more news here? You guys talk about the uh, the HCT Summer Championships going on right now. Today's day three. It ends tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got some info, and I got a link to it in the show notes. But um, I don't know. I voted for Bunny Hopper as of last night. He was six yeah, yeah. So, wow. so I don't know. And you, Craig, you voted for Dog, right? Yeah. How's he doing? I don't know. Let me check. I hope Dog's doing well, cause. Cause uh, who let the dog out? Who? <laughs> I mean, we're trying to get him on the show after that, um, after that crazy win streak that he had, fifty and zero. Do you hear about that, Mike? Yo, I heard, I saw, I couldn't believe. That is insane. I that that that's cheating. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know, dog. Wow. I. So I'm looking at the stats right now, and it looks like dog is. Oh and three, it says, uh, but I don't know. Yeah. I haven't been. You yeah. know, they. That's true. They, is it okay? Okay. That's why I was clapping because I'm looking at the show notes. Um, I was on Twitter before all this started. Of course, everyone's following each other, and let's vote for Doug. Obviously, a sick player, but I go to the site. I'm like, all right, I'll conform. Click the link. I'm scrolling through, and right before I vote for him, I see at the bottom left, Bunny Hopper, and I'm like, hold up. I'm like, whoa. I was like, I watched a show, a tournament before, and this guy just like ran through it. The only memory I have of it was like he was just destroying dudes left and right. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna step out of the curve here. I'm gonna take Bunny Hopper and look at that. Lo and behold, he's killing it. Beautiful. That's what I did too. I picked him. Yeah. Now, now Guidan is doing really good. He's a six and two, and um, Zayo from China looks like is six and one. Jinsu is six and three. But anyways, I, I mean, we'll see. It ends tomorrow. I don't know. And I don't follow this stuff all that close. These games are happening when I'm at work. Mm. And so I don't, I don't get much of a chance to watch. I know they're doing re, uh, reruns at night. But, um, yeah, see, that's what happens. One one person on Twitter will go and pick somebody. Like, say, hey, hey, pick this dude. And then instead of making their independent decision, a lot of people will just follow along and, and do that, which is um, not always advisable. So, anyways... Um, but whatever. I mean, Dog is a great player. I'm not not trying to say anything uh, like that. But anyhow, he's a. He is. Hey, so um, I I don't really want to know that we need to talk about it here, but there is something kind of cool if you guys want to check out later. Um, on the Hearthstone website they posted a blog about the Witchwood mission design. And they've got like some of the devs talking about the missions and how they came up with them and the background behind some of it. Uh, it's pretty cool. So uh, I didn't see anyways. that. Anyways, did you read it, Nate? Uh, I skimmed it. Anything? Anything interesting in there? Um, interesting oh. enough to put in the show notes, but not to talk about on the show. <laughs> you, you crazy. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if you check out our show notes, uh, you know there's there's a link to the post. I mean, it's it's interesting, but it's nothing I, I'm not like newsworthy. But, yeah. All right. Cool. So then let's move on, guys. To mm -hmm. uh, Taverns of Time event is ending July third. So pretty much by the time you hear that, you might have a day. Uh, arena is gonna be back to normal, which is sad. I love this arena. It was super. Yeah. Cool. It's, it's fun, and I love the quests. Like getting. It, these mm -hmm. quests have been super easy to complete for gold, tons of gold and dust. Yo, why are they going to end this? I don't understand. They do the coolest things. And then it's like, yo, everybody's feeling this? Time's up. Like, I, I don't get this company sometimes. Like, keep it going. I, I know you. I'm sorry, Craig. Go. A, I'm sorry. I, th I think there's a good chance that this is uh, not the quests aren't going anywhere. I hope so. I mean, I guess we'll see. Maybe it's just the arena that's going away. I don't know. Yeah, I hope so. It doesn't say anything like finish your quest. Uh, it says finish your arena run. Taverns of Time is ending. Yeah. But they're probably going to end it. It's just, it's a shame. I really like getting all this dust. and For real. You know, it, it makes me a sad guy, you know? I have a lot of the cards, obviously, wild collection. But like you just said, it feels good to stockpile extra dust, extra gold for when the next set comes rolling through. What, like mid August or something like that? So yeah. I'm hoping. All right, if they take the arena away, it's all good. But at least keep the dust. And they already changed the quest, right? So you can get it quest uh, done quicker. Am I right? Yeah, but getting getting dust and gold is 
it has been awesome. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Especially like for me, I'm just stockpiling. Cause I got a, I got a full set. Like I'm stockpiling for the for the new one to come out, mm-hmm. and I'll be able to do. Ideally, I'll be able to put in fifty bucks to do the pre order, mm-hmm. um, and then do the rest with gold um, and dust. But like, say Mike, my, my kid plays on a free to play account, and I help him with his quests and stuff like that. Um, but this is great. Like I, I've been using the dust to craft cards that he's missing. Uh, oh, I see what so, you're saying. Okay, yeah. You know, I mean, a little bit here, a little bit there, but it helps because, like, I was trying to make him a secret mage deck in wild because um, all you really need is uh, the mage weapon, and that was the free weapon that he pulled last time. Mm. And so, But I, you know, I needed a couple of the cards, and um, so I was able to craft him with the dust that I got from this. So, What's his favorite class? Um, so it for a long time, it was priest. All he would play mm. was priest. And then he found out that Shutterwalk was a thing, and now all he wants to play is Shutterwalk, Sean. <laughs> uh, but he, so he, I mean, he's only six, but he mm. like searches collection for Battle Cry, and just anything with a Battle Cry, no matter what it is, he's dropping it in his deck. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I got That's my son, fun. my son Caleb. He's nine. Um, his favorite class is Hunter, and okay. I kid you not, we all know the memes. So. When I hear a child say this, it, it was just too funny. Listen, so he starts playing. He's um, taking down, you know, all the initial quests. Starts unlocking the classes, right? He says to me, he's like, Dad, my favorite class is Hunter. And I'm like, why, Caleb? Why do you like Hunter more than Mage or anything else? He's like, because when you click the hero power, the arrow flies over the taunt walls and you hit him in the face. <laughs> Bro. Taunt is cheap. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> How many memes have we all seen over the years? Like, Hunter, go face. <laughs> Fight around taunts. We got a nine-year-old saying this, like, in the first week of him playing it. He's like, I like Hunter. Use the hero power. Go face. Like, <laughs> That's beautiful. Dude, it's too funny. But, no, he's enjoying the game a lot. He, li- he likes it a lot. Every time he's over here, um, he's asking to play it. So, it's good stuff. Nice, nice. Mm-hmm. Anyway, how about we jump yeah. into the deck of the week, gentlemen? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Dude, I'm excited for this one because we haven't talked about this deck, and we are 28 episodes in, and we have yet to talk about... This uh, is your favorite deck, isn't oh, it? Yeah, it is, too. We haven't talked about Exodia Mage yet. At first, I thought you were bringing Freeze Mage, but this looks more like Mm-mm. an Exodia Mage. Which yeah. it, I mean, it kind of is Freeze Mage, sort of, but... It, it, it's weird because like this deck has evolved somewhat and it's um it's seen some different uh things mm-hmm. i mean in in standard you could do it with the quest but it was kind of random because like you had to get random cards and sometimes they're awful and 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 it's not really reliable and you know but it's different at the same time it's different than the old freeze mage because you don't necessarily need you know this isn't like the ice lance um yeah burn package this is like the otk package Mm -hmm. i love i love 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 this and like the beautiful thing about this deck is like there's no getting out of range you know like (laughs) i took i i I played it i was playing last night with this deck to um to prep for the show right Mm -hmm. and there's a couple screenshots i put them in the show notes right i was playing um this dude had 60 health or he was playing a druid 30 health 30 armor otk (laughs) i'm looking at it right now (laughs) yeah I can see. I mean, Look at that. After I had played three fireballs, he conceded. Yo, his and username. Like, his username is Mad Life. I bet he was mad. He was one of my friends. On my friends, I felt bad because I'm sitting here prepping for the show. Damn. And he um, he's one of my one of my friends on the friends list, and he was online and sent me a like, hey, you want to play a game? And it wasn't like an eighty mm. gold quest. It was just like a random. Oh. You know. Okay. Like a battle request for fun or whatever i was like okay i gotta try this deck out anyways Mm -hmm. and so i just queued it up and (laughs) yo man oh man it doesn't care how many you know giant taunts you have it doesn't care how much armor you got it doesn't care about any of that stuff and that's Uh, why that's that's why i love it it feels so yeah it's not a freeze mage deck but when i play this deck i played i put my tracker up i am 25 games in when i play this deck it feels more how freeze mage used to work because i tried freeze mage now and Mm -hmm. i'm just dying by like turn five or six so 
What I like about this deck, like you just said, I don't care what your life total is because eventually I'm going to pull this combo off and you're going to die. I lost a couple games where I wasn't paying attention, um, kind of did an overdraw, um, like nine or ten cards in my hand. Um, they played, and you know, we're in wild, so they could play uh, Cold Light Oracle. So I was going against a rogue, and that's where I had to shift my mindset. I'm like, yo, pay attention. We're in wild. Don't feel your hand too much because they can play a Cold Light Oracle. So once I started doing that, I started getting wins. And this deck is so much fun because we're in wild. There's ice block. So there's that added protection or added layer of protection where, like, I'm not goofing around, but I have more time to accomplish what I'm trying to do. Versus you actually beating me on top of mm -hmm. blizzards, on top of the other freeze, the stall, etc. So, to me, it feels like freeze mage. But once I get this combo off, game over. So it's, it's like even more powerful. I, I'm I love it. I so love Nate, can I get you to read this deck list out for everyone? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is Banana Rama's list. Um, it's uh, okay. There's two arcane artificers, one book of specters. Uh, Two Doomsayers, two Mad Scientists, two Novice Engineers, two Sorcerer's Apprentice, two Arcane Intellect, two Cold Light Oracles, two Frost Novas, two Ice Barriers, two Ice Blocks, one Simulacrum, one Cone of Cold, two Molten Reflections, a Witchwood Piper, two Blizzards, Emperor Thorison, and of course, Uncle Tony. <laughs> yeah. So it took me a minute to kind of get the feel for this because some of these cards are like, why Cone of Cold? But like, yeah. essentially, you want to stall the game out and draw your combo pieces. Mm -hmm. And you've got tons of that um, between Cone of Cold and Frost Nova and Blizzard. Um, so you still have your classic like Frost Nova Doomsayer combos. Um, the Book of Spectres makes me a little nervous, but at the same time, if, you know... Worst case scenario, you, you burn both of your Molten Reflections, and then you're sad. Mm -hmm. But, like, I, I think that uh, this is it's pretty great. Like, you, it's basically a you stall and you draw. And once you're able to, you know, you play Emperor Thorison to um, uh, just to uh, reduce your card cost. And once you've got, you know, your um, Archmage Antonitis, you play your... Sorcerer's Apprentice, copy him with the Molten Reflection, and that procs your spell. Like, it, it, it yeah. gets the ball rolling for your free, and your fireballs cost zero. And, and then you can just do infinite fireball. Mm -hmm. For your combo, you need, I believe it is four of your pieces, need to have the Thorison tick. Yeah, I was That's just going to say, um, what do you have in your hand when you do Emperor? When you have Emperor, you need four of your combo pieces. Mm -hmm. So, Uncle Tony is one of them. Uh, two Sorcerer's Apprentice. Yep two Molten Reflections, out of those five cards, you just need four of them to have the tick on them. You I remember them it. there was a game, um, a player played a Cold Light Oracle against me. So, you know how some people get... Well, alright, so he knew the deck I was playing after a while. He burns one of my Sorcerer Apprentices, and he's like emoting, you know, like, well played. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna show this dude. So... Like you said, Nate, Book of Spectres kind of makes me nervous. Play it. I drew... No, no, the next turn, I drew a Molten. So I got Uncle Tony, one of the Sorcerers, um, and I drew a Molten. I already had another one. Play Book of Spectres. Um, I think I got an Arcane Artificer. I think I played another spell just to get armor. Um, so two turns later, or within the next two turns, I'm playing Emperor making the cards reduce their cost by one. He doesn't know that I can still pull this combo off. So as these two turns are going by, you know how people are when they get all confident, swagged out with the emotes, just thinking they're going to win, right? <laughs> so I play the ice block. He uh, hits the block. I play the second one. I didn't need to, but that was the BM because you want to emote, I'm going to make this win worth it. So I play Emperor on that second ice block. He destroys Emperor. He destroys ice block. And then um, I play Tony play one of the apprentices and then i play um you know the copy spell molten reflection and once i copy the second one into the third one or the third one into the fourth one that's when he hit the concede button he hit that concede button so fast i was like bro what happened thought you was talking shit thought you was talking shit 
what you use simulacrum to make up for the burnt uh oh i'm sorry yes that's what it was because yeah the uh sorcerer got it got burned so then i had to copy how do you pronounce that card simulacrum simu yeah what you said okay simulacrum i only know that because in magic the gathering solemn simu simulacrum was a tough card to say god yeah damn. yep yep simulacrum okay Fun fact about Solemn Simulacrum, uh, <laughs> for our magic listeners out there, it's a four mana two two that lets you draw. It draws a card when it or it searches for a land when it enters and draws a card when it leaves. Originally, it was printed as a blue green card that cost three, but then Mark Rosewire decided to make it a colorless creature that costs four. Oh. Yeah, it was supposed to be a Simic card at first, which makes sense, which is why you could get the land from the green and you could draw a card from the blue. Fun fact, blister guy, fact check me. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I Too ran funny. that card. <clears throat> yeah, I think anyone who played Commander probably ran that card. I love that yeah. card. Commander's but, the only format that I played. I wanted I, to... Anyways, yeah, sorry, no, 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 I'm, you're good. Yeah, no, I'm a jerk. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I wanted to talk about Witchwood Piper. That's the four mana 3-3 three, three that draws the lowest card cost from your deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's an interesting... I never uh, thought about it in Exodia. I never tried it in Exodia, but it makes perfect sense. It's great, because you... I mean, if you're missing one of your key combo pieces... Yep. I'll yeah, get it. It, it can get you... Yeah, or it can help you thin your deck or whatever. Like, cause there's a lot of cards that don't cost much in here, but... Yeah. It's still nice to have, I guess, and it doesn't get burned by the book, so that's nice. So, what I want to know is, like, how does this deck do... Like, against slow decks... Or combo decks like it, it's fine you know mm -hmm. I, I feel like you probably have the upper hand because there's no you you have enough stall that there's not a big deal but how does it do against aggro because I, like we've seen a lot of even shaman a lot of odd paladin on ladder and like if they're rushing you down um you know how do you stall that off for me myself i've only come across in the 25 games I've only come across three aggro decks. So I do wish that I had like a larger sample size. Um, people call me crazy, but whenever I come across a new deck, I honestly, and I have the deck tracker stats to prove this, I try to get 50 games in, regardless of what the record is, just so I can understand the inner workings, the matchups. Because um, given a said season, you'll play against, um, against one class more than others. So for me, playing those 50 games gives me a larger sample to come across different decks the aggro decks i came across i didn't draw the stall that i needed in time but like i said that's only three decks that i came across because playing over well this is a wild deck but playing wild i kept coming across some kind of combo deck or like a barnes priest and they would just never get barnes or the cards they got they just drew in a bad order mm -hmm. um but i am curious and i will play more to see what i can do and what the matchups matchups are like against more aggro decks i should see, just I ask i should i'm sorry i should ask like a friend um like you know about it like bring your aggro decks try to try this out i should do that yeah. so thank you for asking me yeah I, oh yeah craig what do you think i think this deck would do would fare okay against aggro like not like it's obviously not what you're hoping to bump into mm -hmm. but like it has a lot of uh a lot of armor gain between ice barrier Ice block, not not armor game for ice block there, but ice bear, ice block, and uh, arcane artificer. You're gonna be gaining a lot. Obviously, the doomsayers are there to help. Kona Cold's a little tech card for the uh, those paladins and those aggro decks out there. So I, I think that you'd like. I I can't imagine that this this deck this deck probably has its combo usually in about what 13, 14 turns. Probably gets to the bottom of its deck with all the cards. I... It was crazy. So last night I had my combo pieces as early as turn seven sitting in my hand. I played Emperor on six. Um, turn seven? It was crazy. I mean, I just it was like draw a card, draw a card, draw a card. And, and then I played um, Simulacrum or whatever it is mm -hmm. uh, and to, to get an extra copy of um, Sorcerer's Apprentice. And then I dropped Emperor. And I did the combo. I waited until turn 9 or turn 10, I think, to do it because I wanted to make sure I had enough mana. Mm -hmm. But I had all the pieces in my hand um, by turn 7. And so at that point, I was just stalling. But I, I, I mean, 
granted, I was going up against some kind of Togwaggle Druid or Taunt Druid or or Jade. I don't even know what kind of Druid it was. It just had a ton of armor. Um, so, I mean, but it was like there's the draw mechanic and the stall mechanic works so well in this deck that essentially, you know, like you guys are saying, you draw, draw all your cards, stall the game, mm -hmm. and there's two ice blocks. Like, you don't... You don't even have to. You can get killed twice essentially before you, um, you know, before you really are are out of it. Um, yeah, and there's two mad scientists to help you get to those ice blocks too. Right. I love mad scientists. Yeah, that's Yo, one of my favorite. That cards. card is so dope. I uh, I'm really sad that he's in wild. Just like uh, I I can talk for hours about this card. I'll shut up. But it's a good card. I'll back up. Oh yeah, especially in mage, and it's also nice that it. Uh, it helps against aggro on so many levels, Mad Scientist. It's a body on two, and it obviously our secrets are just there to combat aggro for the most part. So, uh, man, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I do like the um, the unknown factor of it. So, yeah, it's a 2-2. Two -two. It combats aggro, pulls a secret from your deck, which will help you obviously draw your combo or whatever cards that are more important to you. But the secret it puts into play... Um, Obviously, if the person doesn't know what you're playing, I like that surprise element. So then their brain starts working. Is this explosive runes? Is this counter spell? Is it mirror entity, et cetera, et cetera? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, it'll throw people off. People think yeah, I, I was in a game, dude thought it was a counter spell. He played a minion, a gigantic minion, like a seven, man, min, seven mana minion on turn seven and conceded right after because he gave me lethal. You know what I'm saying? No, yeah, it makes sense. And especially if they, if they don't. Uh, I'm surprised he. He didn't know that it, you weren't playing uh, mm -hmm. counter spells by turn seven, but yeah. oh well, it's it, it, it works like it works good on turn two, specifically if they they might think it's an explosive ruins or uh, whatever the hell. But well, I wonder if, if people know right away that this is Exodia, probably because second. Well, I don't know because big spell mage is making a little bit of a comeback, um, and same with Reno mage, um, are both decks in wild and that are slower. I mean, you know right off the bat probably it's not Secret Mage because that deck is really aggressive. And same with Burn Mage. Like, those have cards coming out the gate turn one, turn two. Uh, but, like, Reno, uh, Reno Mage is definitely a thing that a lot of people are playing. Yeah, definitely some big turns to look for. Your obvious, like, Frost Nova Doomsayer is huge. Kona Cold Doomsayer is big. Blizzard Doomsayer. Blizzard in general, like... You really want to fight to just... I think probably managing your removal is big, like knowing when you can take damage and when you can't, all that nonsense, and uh, knowing what decks... I think a huge thing is knowing if your opponent runs a... If you think your opponent runs a Cold Light Oracle, like uh, like Mike said, you need to be very aware because it feels pretty bad when you lose the game because you don't have... Uh, you don't have your combo in your, in your deck anymore. But this, game, this deck's pretty forgiving with that Simulacrum. That really does... Like Mike said, it makes you have a chance to uh, come back from losing your combo pieces, which, you know, you can't say that for many combo decks. Most of them aren't so forgiving. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people um, teching in Dirty Rat in Wild to get rid, you know, to get rid of all the Druid. Yeah, and uh, God forbid we see a Gnome Feratu. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, people are running it in their uh, in their Reno Lock decks. Yeah, I've seen that. I and, and I know Blister Guy says it's a bad card, but like it i don't know i don't know i like it no i totally uh, agree with blister guy it's a bad guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two, two man and two three do nothing and once in a while feel good about yourself <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true i won't lie it's definitely true but i, I still like it you know what if you run it don't listen to our show <laughs> oh, <I'm just> joking. <laughs> <laughs> wow and wiser words have never been spoken. <laughs> <laughs> you listen to that on Into the Wow. But, um, yeah, Bo Booster Guy's just loving this episode. He's getting all the shout-outs. All, all right. Well, What's that? He is, he is one of our favorite people. So. I love Blister Guy. I love blisters. Dude, his, <laughs> his um when he streams outdoors, I was on a stream one time. Um, I, First of all, I love his stream titles. Like, on lunch break, going to go stream in the park. Like, first of all, what kind of job is that? That sounds cool. Uh, how do you stream in the park? And I was in his chat, and he's like, "Oh yeah, all casual." He's like, "Yeah, I just use a uh, hotspot on my phone." And I'm like, "Yeah, no, dude." I heard him I'm like, about it on "Oh snap!" And stuff. 
Yeah, I'm like, that's that's genius. Yeah. I'm like, I need to get me a better laptop. (laughs) What cracks me up is that he's got this, that giant oversized mouse pad. (laughs) Hearthstone. um, Like, have you seen it? The stained glass one? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Yep. I like, I got (laughs) it. They don't sell it anymore. Um, I got it as a Christmas gift and um, they don't sell it in the store anymore. It's awesome. I, I It takes up like my entire desk. It's huge. Mm-hmm. And he managed to get his hands on one, which is super cool and it's rare. And the funniest thing is he uses it to sit on in the park so he doesn't get his pants dirty. Yeah. yeah. That's, <laughs> That's what I was hilarious. laughing. hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and I, yeah. <laughs> it's a little sacrilegious, but it's okay. I can't blame him. I mean, Definitely it's uh, it's it's hilarious though. But I love it. Yeah, I was playing out in the park under a tree, dodging giant spiders and <laughs> giant spider. Wait, are we playing magic here? <laughs> <laughs> I think that it's a cool giant. concept though. Definitely a cool concept. I told him um, if he ever sees me doing it, um, I, I was like, I'll give you full credit right now because I'm gonna do this one day. Like this is genius. Like playing Hearthstone out. I know it sounds simple, but playing outside i never even thought of that get a laptop get a hotspot there it's, you almost go. Like, it's almost like playing inside except out <laughs> <laughs> my playing hearthstone outside is opening the window <laughs> hey that's what i call a foreign concept am i right yeah, ooh. Uh, i play out on the balcony sometimes he's, he's from australia he's from new zealand that was new zealand yeah oh i'm getting fact check oh yeah fact check <laughs> <laughs> uh you can yeah you can let us know but um Jeez. he's the reason that I started doing those infographics way back when. Oh, uh, he's okay. the inspiration for that because he was doing them for standard, and I was like, I want to do that, but for wild. Oh yeah, and, that's right. And I haven't done one in a long time because we make them for the show. Yeah, and um, and they take a long time, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I don't have a lot of time. Um, and the and the meta moves quickly sometimes, and 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 it's a lot of work. But yeah. anyways. Um, he's the inspiration for that and, and I really appreciate it he was super cool when I first started I reached out to him and I was like hey I don't want to step on your toes um, I don't want to make something that you're already making and take credit for it Like, and he was really supportive and uh, yeah. very very cool about the whole thing and he was like no do it uh, the more you know the more the merrier and, and and he's just an all around great guy so awesome. little did Nate know that Blister guy resented him on the inside <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna make wild graphics, and he came along. <laughs> anyway. It was so funny because I was on the Hero Power podcast, and he had—they ju- were asking me, um, like, "Oh, what deck should standard players play in Wild?" And I was like, "Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, I have an infographic for that that Blister guy made last week, and uh, it was so funny." Uh, no. Anyways, he did he did a pretty awesome one a while back. Uh, wild wild meta for standard players and it's, it's pretty yeah, dope. It's, yeah, it, was, it sounds like you had to be there for that one. It's on our website if you want to check it out. Oh, yeah. perfect. So go ahead and to the wildhs.com, check it out. So I think we should probably talk about mulligans for this deck. Uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Mike, what do you want to keep in this? So let me pull this up. What I want to keep. What would make me feel good? If I have, I'm going first or second. Doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. I want to have Mad Scientist. Yeah. I want to have. I definitely don't want to have any kind of secrets. I'm sending those secrets back. Yeah, in any um, matchup. In any matchup. I want to. I might sound crazy, but me myself, I want to keep uh, Witchwood Piper. And if I come across Arcane Artificer, most definitely. If I think I'm going against an aggro. I think I'll, I'll keep a Doomsayer, but like I said before, I haven't come across that many aggro decks yet. And of course, obviously, a Novice Engineer. Um, what do you guys feel like you should keep? Well, Mad, Mad Scientist is my, like, A number one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, any matchup, you keep Mad Scientist. Right? I think so. Yeah, oh yeah. But, oh if, yeah. If I was playing against any aggro, which I think is the most important uh, mulligan for Like, if you think that it could be aggro, you should probably just assume aggro for this deck. Mm-hmm. And if I am, then I'm playing. I'm keeping any Doomsayers I have. I'm keeping Mad Scientist. Uh, and then after that, I don't. Uh, you know, there's not. A, there's not a ton. Maybe I would keep an Arcane Artificer against an aggro deck. I probably would, uh, just to try to get some value off of it. And then I'm probably gonna even keep cards like Kona Cold if I'm expecting an aggro matchup. Ooh, okay. Because, uh, 
I mean, if it's Paladin or something. Yeah, if you have a way, you need a way back in. You need to stall out to get to Blizzard because against Aggro, you basically want to get to turn six to to try and clear their board, right? Yeah. That's how it feels anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if this deck could benefit from uh, from uh, Dragon's Fury in it because I'm looking at it and like the worst you can, it's the worst case scenario. It's an excavated evil. No, it could be a book, book of Speckers. Yeah. I wonder if you need book of Speckers. Yeah. I don't know. I I. I wish, like, hey, Bananaramic, if you're listening to this, uh, or maybe I'll tweet at you, but I'm curious about that as well. Um, so it, the Book of Spectres makes me feel a little bit nervous just because you don't want to get rid of one of your combo pieces um, or I don't know. Like, it, it – I don't know. I, I'm, I'm interesting, interested to see why that's in there. I, I mean, it's a draw mechanic, really, I think, because – the purpose of this deck is to draw your combo. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would feel bad that if you're burning, you know, what happens when you burn ice block, ice block, molten reflection? Ooh. Yeah, I'm looking at it and yeah. I'm almost thinking getting, I, I might, I'm going to try it out w with this list for sure because who am I to, to say Bananaramic's wrong? That guy's a, a pretty, a, a genius, a pretty genius. And um, I think though I'm going to try taking Book of Spectres out and uh, maybe taking out would either Witchwood Piper or maybe uh, one, or the Kona Cold and putting in Dragon's Furies because I do I just feel like Dragon's Furies could really really help this deck be a little more consistent against uh, against aggression unless he's maybe he's also saying the same thing as uh, as Mike here and not seeing too much aggro but I I feel like there's still going to be quite a bit around I think Mike might have got a little lucky well hey oh, yeah. we have 18 I mean, I deck slots so we can make his version and the idea you have because I do like that when you say uh, Dragon's Fury. I do feel more comfortable because Book of Specters, unless it's what is that that Murloc Mage list, I, I it makes me nervous. Like I don't want to burn any spells. Right, right. Yeah, it's a, it's just a, yeah. There's certain spells you just can't burn. Yeah. Uh, it's probably why he only has one because really the only thing that you that you really sh like really kick yourself for is Molten Reflection, and you can live without one Molten Reflection. Like you can get. Yeah, by. you only need one. Um. Yeah, but still, I I don't know, man. I don't know. I'd feel pretty bad getting rid of Joey's Frost Novas. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, so the OTK combo here, and correct me if I'm wrong, because you guys both play this more than me, um, mm -hmm. yeah. is you you wait until you've got four four of your combo pieces in hand to play Emperor to reduce them, and then you play Uncle Tony, your Archmage Antonitis, um, it, it play multiple Sorcerer's Apprentices, and the more you get... Uh, wait, how many? Do they, do they reduce your mana or reduce their spells by one? Yes. Is that right? Okay, okay. So the more you play, you know, now you play two or three or four. Um, like you play two and then you want a Molten Reflection one. Mm -hmm. And what happens is you start getting... Um, if you can get to the point where you've got four Sorcerer's Apprentices, you can play spells for zero... And then your fireballs, which normally cost four, all cost zero now. And you just have to be quick uh, and throw a bunch of fireballs to your opponent's face um, as quickly as you possibly can. Now, have you um, encountered any issues with the rope? I'm, I'm really curious about this. I've only... One game I've ever lost to the rope was because I was being a jerk and I wasn't... I was going too slow. I was PMing. <laughs> no, no, you. Yeah, no. I, don't, I, always, I always get weird because like I, I, I make my battle, my battle tag is into the wild, and uh, I, I'm a BMer a little bit. I know it's not right. I know Ziggy's out there cringing at me right now, but uh, <laughs> I, just, I just, I think it's funny, especially with this deck where you either win with the combo or you lose like, in a really shitty way. So it's like, yeah. I like to hit myself in the face with fireballs until I'm at one health. Sorry, you know. And then, uh, but other than that, like even. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's one of you. <laughs> oh, you hit yourself. Are you the one like, and you kill all their minions first as well? Yeah, yeah. You clear their board, and then you clear your board, and then, like, except, like not. Clear oh, your you board. clear. Your... Oh, I was gonna say. Uh... <laughs> you know, if you have a novice engineer it's out there. It's pure BM. Yeah, and if you have the extra mana, you can kill off one of your uh, cult sorcerers at the sorcerers apprentices. Oh. Near the that's risky okay mm -mm. he's gonna know the math mm -mm. spawn guys it's fun i swear that's crazy <laughs> i'm a nice person i swear but um 
Yeah, uh, I think that it is very important to hit yourself in the face a couple times and say, oops, it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, we're going to get hate mail for this one. I know it already. Oh, but that's the, hilarious. But, yeah, but the rope really isn't an issue. Like, I think I saw one streamer, like, I'd be scared if I was playing against, like, a dead man's hand warrior. Mm. Like, that's, like, the one time where it's, like, if they're at 112 armor or something, then you just got to spend that whole 75 seconds going click, 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 click. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, when I was playing the dude with 60 health, I mean, it was 30 health and 30 armor. I was just, you know, dragging as quick as I could because, I mean, as long as you've done the clicks, like the rope will go and your turns will, you know, as long as you've executed it before the rope, um, you know, the animation will keep going. Uh, we're not playing warrior here, Nate. I don't know why we're talking about execute. <laughs> so yeah, I like having <laughs> Uncle Tony, two um, sorcerers, and a molten reflection. By doing that, those two will reduce molten down to two. Copying one will make that molten cost one. If I have another one to reduce, that one costs zero. I'll have another spell. As you guys can see the list, there's no spells higher than six. So with the four sorcerers on the board, any spell costs zero. And yeah. it's pretty much game from there. So The, the only correction yeah. I'd make there is that uh, you play the two sorcerers, the first Molten Reflection will cost two. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. And all, Never mind. And if you had a tick on it, you're right. If you already had a tick on the Molten Reflection, then it's free. But the only reason we say that, uh, I just want to make it perfectly clear, is that yeah. if you have four pieces ticked down mm -hmm. from Emperor, then you have exactly enough mana to put Uncle Tony down and do your combo. If you only have three pieces clicked, mm. then you're going to have to make them survive on the board. So you're going to need to hit Ooh, four pieces. So yeah. Gotcha. Uh, Wait, and, and, and is this at 10 mana? Yes. At yes. 10, uh, yeah, must stress that. It's 10 mana. It needs to be 10 mana. Yeah, because he'll yeah. cost six. The other pieces will cost, the, the girls will cost one. I see what you're saying. I got you. And when this you is, first, yeah. You can, when you first do it, you can like count it out every time. But once you, like to save your own energy, it's good to know. Like, yeah, you need to hit four pieces, and that's it. Four pieces is what's important. I, I don't know. That might change a little bit with like simulacrums. Like, if you have three sorcerers apprentices in your hand, and I think you would need all three to be clicked down. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. If you're gonna go it that way without the molten reflection, because there is other ways to hit the combo with uh, because of simulacrum. That's the other way to hit the combo is to have three sorcerers. But I think you want the, you'd want those all clicked. I don't know, I keep saying clicked, but ticked from uh, the uh, Orson. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah. This is definitely, um, Nate, um, so as far as getting the fireballs out, APM, I don't have an issue with the rope because I, like I said before, I was always playing Freeze Mage. I forget when, but um, whenever Exodia Mage first came about, um, I was addicted. Um, so I, I guess I already have the muscle memory. But let me say this. Um, this is not a deck you want to play uh, Walking in the Rain. You know, uh, you want to get those fireballs out quick, so make sure your your, your screen's dry, because you can mess up. I, I I used to play Freeze Mage on my cell phone, and I'm just like never again. I'm like, because the rope will come in, and I don't know what's different for me mentally about playing on mobile versus PC. Like when the rope happens on mobile, I don't know why, but every time I'm like, shit, let's go, we gotta move, like, <laughs> and I just, and I just mess up. And I'm like, damn. Like, <laughs> it is different because on the mobile phone you have like. With the computer, you can if you know where that echo card is gonna go, which is essentially what fire, the fireball works is like it's an echo card. Mm -hmm. uh, you you can you know you can click ahead of time. You know what I mean? Like you can yes. like, yeah. judge. And with a phone, you can't do that. It won't. It doesn't register. You have to wait till the actual animation's there and then go and then go. And you do not have as much time if you're playing with a phone. Don't BM if they're at a lot of health. Just, <laughs> like, BM once you get them down to six health, then start. <laughs> Too funny. Let's just be clear. It's your fault. If I'm BMing you and I have the full combo and you see me hitting myself in the face, yeah, sure, wait 75 seconds and hope I mess up, but you're doing that to yourself. <laughs> I can appreciate that. Yep. Yep. Damn yeah, right. I, mean, I don't care. <laughs> I, want I want to hear your email. Get at me, guys. <laughs> Is there anything else that we're missing with this deck or anything that's not... Um... Like, I mean, this is not a deck for beginners, I think, because it is it, there's some thinking involved. Yeah. Uh, but, like, what do you – are there any maybe synergies that we're missing or um, anything that's not, like, readily uh, apparent with this deck? 
Let's look. I think Witchwood Piper is just one to keep. But I don't know how Witchwood Piper works. Do we have a? Uh, it we... draws. What it does is it draws the lowest cost minion remaining in your deck to your hand. And is it random? Well, if you've got ones that are, if you say in this one you've got a doom, like say you've got multiple cards that are all two mana, right? Yes, sir. Yes, it's gonna be random. Okay. So. Um, but it's good for drawing one of your combo pieces if you need it. And honestly, you know, pulling a mad scientist or a novice engineer or a sorcerer's apprentice are all pretty good. So, um, I mean, I think the reason that it's in here, and of course I'd have to ask banana, but like, it's just to draw, 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 draw is what you need to do. Yeah. And I'm sure the synergy with the book of specters kind of, kind of plays a role. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm guessing just to have some card drawn there. That's, uh. You know, I'm not gonna get killed by the book of specters. Yeah, yeah, to me, it just felt like card draw because there are other minions that cost four mana that draw, but I just think with this specific Witchwood Piper, it'll draw one of like the combo pieces or a a minion that you will actually need at some point. Maybe you need to play that to get a novice to draw a card, or play that to draw a mad scientist or a doomsayer. Because I'm looking at this list, you could do like a Witchwood. Let's say it pulls a Doomsayer, that's six mana, and then you could play um, a Frost Nova or a Corner Cold. I haven't come across that scenario, but I'm just trying to think of what Nate asked about synergies. I mean, it'll pull your Arcane Artificer if you don't have it, because it's the only one cost minion in the deck. Yeah, exactly. Well, I wonder if that's what it's, if that's like the main the main thing of it is to get Arcane uh, Artificer into your hand. I never even thought of that. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like it's trying to thin your deck. If if I'm looking at it, can we stop body shaming our decks, please? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you tweet um, if you tweet Banana Ramic, um, I'll jump in at thread too because I'm really curious now. I didn't think about it until we started talking about this. Yeah, I think and I think as for matchups go, I'm pretty sure Aggro is one of our tougher matchups. Uh, I think Q block. I think I think I I really feel like well. The one that seems really difficult to play around is um, Secret Mage, because like you don't want to be getting uh, counterspelled here, or mm. or you have to be if you're playing against Secret Mage, you got to be really careful when you drop your combo pieces, because um, explosive runes is a thing. So like, I would play Emperor Thoris and, or I mean, excuse me, Archmage Antonitis first. In the event that there's an explosive runes, he'll get hit for six, and he still has one health left. Because um, if you play uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice first into their explosive runes, there goes your combo. Yeah, yeah. she did. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, aggro seems hard. Uh, but then again, there's enough stall in this that it it seems winnable. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. So, big priest is probably another difficult matchup for this deck. Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. It depends what they pull. You know, I mean, if they're able to pull something slower, like, we don't really care so much about seeing an Obsidian statue, because the attack is only four. But, like, yeah. if they're able to pull Yasiraj or, like, Ragnaros, that's a problem. Yeah. yeah. Or uh, Lich King. Yeah, we don't have... We have Something bears. huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do we have any single target removal? No way. Outside of uh, Doomsayer, I guess, is Master removal, but, I mean, we don't really have any, any big removal in here, so... Uh, no. Anyway, though, I love this deck, guys. For <laughs> your listeners at home, this is my <laughs> favorite deck by far, easily. I don't know what it is about it. It's just so much fun. It's so much fun for me. So, <laughs> Oh, hey, so, since you have the background, Craig, can you tell us um, the what is Exodia from Yu-Gi-Oh? Because I don't know. I mean, I think we said it once before in the show, but, like, where does it get its name from? All right, well, in the... It, it comes up back in the show a couple times, but in one of the first episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh, mm -hmm. Yugi's using his grandfather's deck to try to save his grandfather's soul from, soul from the Shadow Realm. And all the odds are stacked against Yugi as he's playing against the leader of the Kaiba Corporation, Seto Kaiba. And Kaiba's like, hmm, Yugi, I'm going to beat you. And uh, <laughs> they're against each other. And uh, he plays down uh, Blue Eyes White Dragon, which is so powerful. Ooh. Clearly, clearly... Clearly, Yugi's going to lose. And then Luki goes, Seto Kaiba, you have forgotten to believe in the heart of your cards and <laughs> the power of friendship. And he looks at his hand that he has uh, 
marker marker written on it that has <laughs> friend drew on their hands and they go with the power of friendship i can't lose and then he draws the top card of his deck and he goes blue eyes white dragon might be powerful but i have the one card more powerful i reveal exodia and he puts <laughs> down exodia and what exodia is is there's a left leg of exodia the right leg of the forbidden one the left arm of the forbidden one the right arm of the forbidden one and then exodia the forbidden one and when you have all five in your hand you simply put your hand on the table show your opponent and say gg my friend because i win because if you have all five in your hand you win the game and exodia mage is essentially that because it has five combo pieces that if you have them all in your hand in this case they need to be reduced you win the game mm -hmm. can i jump in real quick yep yeah so nate picture um the death knight from paladin when okay. you play the four horsemen game over Right, right, right. Immediately, you don't get to do anything else, no interactions. So, because I played Yu-Gi-Oh too, so I can jump in on this. The oh, second, sweet. the second you have the five pieces, the two arms, the two legs, and the head of Exodia, same effect as uh, Uther's Death Knight. Game over. Nothing more. Gotcha. It's a wrap. There's no animation, but on the TV show, um, you'd play the five cards on the board, and then he would just come out of this gigantic like. Shadow Realm Void, um, and so Yugi would yell, yeah, obliterate, yeah, yeah, yeah. He would yell obliterate, <laughs> and this dude would like put his right palm out, and like this light would just come out and just blow everything to pieces. So it's the idea, Nate, of like this ancient forbidden being that is not allowed in this realm unless you collect all five pieces. Now, listen, that's how powerful he is. That's I'm YouTubing it. Yeah, For you the should. listeners out there, I know what you're thinking, but mm -hmm. wait, why wouldn't Yugi just always use this Exodia deck through the rest of the series? Hmm. Uh, why, he Craig? A, well, <laughs> well, thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. When he took a cruise, a cruise to the um, Duelist Kingdom, Weevil Underwood, that slimy bastard, slimy. took Yugi's deck and threw it over the edge into the water so that he wouldn't have those powerful cards anymore. So then Yugi had to rely on his other cards that weren't quite as powerful. Karibo. <laughs> yeah, Karibo. <laughs> they made it seem like such a cool card, but in the real game, it wasn't that good. No. It was Nate, still good. Karibo in Yu-Gi-Oh! is like Alley Cat in Hearthstone. Like, it's this little 1-1 one, one or 100 attack, 100 health creature. It's so stupid. Like It's got a cool effect, though. What it does is when you get attacked, you can reveal Karibo from your hand and put it into your graveyard, and all the damage goes down to zero. Yes. That anyway. is, that is a cool effect. But that's Yu-Gi-Oh, sorry. This was your cool history lesson for the day. <laughs> but that would explain Exodia Mage. It's perfectly, yeah, five cards, and then it's game over. There's no coming back for that. I guess in Hearthstone, you could miss if you, like, BM and the rope burns out. But anybody who's trying to win, you've been playing the whole game to get that combo. So once you get those five pieces of Antonitis, it's over. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. All right. It's cool All stuff. Right. I have the video queued up here. Yeah, I'm you should, watching it. You should check it out. Yo, uh, Craig, I like that you said that. I remember that episode when uh, Weevil, he literally took this dude's deck and just like threw it overboard. And I'm like, oh, yo, so I remember being a kid, a teenager or whatever. And I'm like, son, I'm like, how are you not throwing him overboard? Like, what the hell? <laughs> like, I'm going to take my cards and throw them overboard. You know, it is like growing up when you have your own card collection. Like if someone touches it or messes with it. So I'm just like, that's crazy that he didn't react or do anything. Yeah, I know. Uh, Yugi was a really good guy like that. Oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, you see it, Nate? Exodia. Yeah, Obliterate. exactly, yeah. <laughs> so that's where the and name comes from, yeah, those five pieces. We've given you guys a lot to ponder this week here on Into the Wild. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff in this episode. Good time. Oh, good. it's pretty rad. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so... I think we've pretty much exhausted what we can talk about with this deck. I'd recommend that the listeners uh, check it out because it is a super fun deck. Super, super fun. I love the deck. Mm -hmm. love yes. It. Love it. Yes. So, and uh, other than that, like, I think that's kind of a wrap. Um, just so Yeah, I want to give a shout out to our patrons before we wrap up here, too. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, yeah. so, all right. Yeah, hey, so thank you again um, to the patrons of the show. We, we really do appreciate your, your help and support. Um, we're pumping the money back into the show. It's paying for the website and for our other projects. Um, a big thank you to our executive producer of the show, Wildcard. 
and to our other patrons, Shokunin, Blue Train, Beardy Man, uh, Zoroshio from Hero Power, Stark Maximum, Mad at Arms, Nate Dog, Beef Squatch, Adam W. And, and uh, as we're recording this show, we just got an, a new patron. It just popped up on my phone, basic. Thank yeah. you so much. Excellent. That's awesome. And I'm going to join as well. Give me a week. Thanks, dude. That's really nice of you. Um, I really appreciate it. Most definitely. Yeah, you, you guys are all good people, especially you meet basic. Because I, I was going to say the same thing, Nate. I, I, I was hoping, I was wondering if you would notice or not. And I was going to say, Nate, guess what? We got a new one. But Nate already noticed. So. Oh, I noticed everything. You guys are pros. That's very cool, though. It's super I'm cool. I'm really happy. Like, we, you guys are awesome, you listeners. Like, I expected, like, maybe 20 bucks coming in by now. So, it's pretty nice that we we're gonna be able to cover the website fees like in a couple months I think it should almost cover a year for the website so that's nice yeah. and we put, awesome you know we put a lot of cash into it and it's nice to be able to uh, see that you guys are enjoying it enough to uh, you know use some of your money to help us out yeah and and we wouldn't do like we're trying to uh, return the favor as far as doing some bonus content and um, and stuff that you know so that you're getting a return on, on your investment so to speak um, so as we record this, uh, when the episode drops, you should be have a new bonus episode waiting for you, um, which should be fun. Uh, I just posted a new deck list that I've been laddering with. I'm almost to rank three. Um, so I posted the deck list and some uh, how, how to pilot at synergies and everything. That's up on our Patreon as well. Yeah, and I was just listening to that bonus episode, Nate, that you and uh, Heilung did. And uh, that's a really cool episode. It's all about Naxxramas. Uh the initial design for Nax Ramus. So like I, I really like that and uh I, I strongly recommend it to any of you non patrons uh give you a reason to toss us five bucks for a month. Yeah, very fun. It was really fun to do and it was something that we really had been wanting to talk about for a long, long time and just didn't have time to do on the main show. So Yeah, and that's you know, what I love about awesome. it. We have we 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 were able to go in depth on the arena. We were uh, the new arena there, and we were able to go in. You guys were able to go in depth on Nax Ramus, and that's what the Patreon's all about: is for us to do some stuff that we couldn't normally format into our regular show. I have something I'm looking, I'm talking to my, uh, Danny Richardson from My Black Friend, and I'm thinking of trying to get him to come on to uh, the Patreon for an episode because he just installed Hearthstone on his phone after listening for what 27, 28 episodes now. <laughs> uh, he finally we finally got him. Yeah, well, he hasn't played it yet. He installed it, and he's like, I haven't quite had the urge to play it yet. So I'm hoping maybe I can record uh, our for his first game ever and put it on the Patreon. That'd be pretty cool. To oh, beautiful, that'd be fun. Yeah, and just talk through what he's thinking and what if he if he likes it because you can tell he's into it. Whenever I talk to him, he goes, "So how's Cube? Uh, how's Cube Warlock doing?" <laughs> <laughs> that, hey, that's what I'm playing right now. It's it's still good. <laughs> yeah. I think that'll be his favorite deck, even if he doesn't know how to play it. But, uh, yeah, that's exciting. But I, I love our patron, Nate. It, it, it's really fun, and we're already getting up there, and uh, we really appreciate it, guys, because, uh, you know, we couldn't do it without uh, viewers like you. Very cool. Well, hey, Mike, uh, where can people find you? Mike! Oh, we lost you. Hey, where can where can people find you online? You guys got me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, real quick. I was going to say, I'm looking at your list of patrons. Um, I recognize all the names. Great people. Um, I wanted to do a quick shout out to uh, Shokunin because I received packs before from Shokunin. So I just want to say thank you very much. Also, oh, yeah, uh, he's, a, he's a great dude. Yeah. Also from Beach, uh, Beef Squatch. Played against Beef Squatch in the Coin Concede League. All these names. Great people. You know, it's Rocio, Mad at Arms, etc. Good people. So yeah, I see Beef Squatch all the time posting in. So Tier Five, not to get too far off track, but Tier Five's got their Discord, and in the Discord, one of the one of the pages is uh, funny Battle.net tag yeah, names. Yeah, yep. He posts in there all the time, and they are so funny. <laughs> if you get a chance to check it out, um, I recommend that. Yeah, Vince most definitely. McMahon, still one of my favorites. <laughs> Vince McMahon. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah, I'm sorry to answer your question for the shout outs closing section. People can find me on Twitter at ML Streams, and I'm also on Twitch, Twitch affiliate, um, same names, same name, twitch.tv backslash ML Streams. Awesome. Craig, what about you, bud? You can find me at Craig of Canada. And you know what, guys? Check out my black friend uh, if you want to. I haven't plugged them for a while. Who, me? Uh, <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been waiting to say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy I plugged it today. 
Yeah, check out my black friend. Uh, if you go to their feed as well, you can hear my other little sideshow called the accountability chat. I know. Uh, shout out to Zeroshio. I know that you listen from Hero Power. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, check out uh, the accountability chat. It's on the my black friend stream. Great show. And uh, just found out that my black friend will actually be ending forever come episode 275. And they asked. Oh. Yeah, oh, and man. they asked yours truly to. Uh, to write a song for that last episode, so I'll be doing that. Ooh. And uh, but don't worry, are they, not, it's... are they not friends anymore? Oh no, they're friends. It's just Debo finally went through with the surgery, and he's he's white now. Oh, no, no, no. oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, no, Debo's just Debo's kids getting Debo has a, a lot going on, and his and now his kids getting to that age where it's gonna get even uh. tougher for him and. It, it, it's just he he can't do it. He's been podcasting for like six years now, every week, and mm. they've been doing a Patreon. They went deep, and uh, yeah, come November it'll be the end. But the good news is I, I can't go too far into it, but I will be doing a, a new podcast with Danny Richardson. Oh, uh, beautiful. Me, cool. Yeah, me and I'm a couple other guys, and we're not gonna tell you what it's about. I'm not gonna. Bro, tell how you many podcasts can you be on at one time? <laughs> uh, luckily Infinity. for this one, Dan Danny will be the man steering the ship, and I'll just be along for the ride. But uh, he's my hero. I would, if it, if it came down to it, I would abandon uh, everything I've done in the podcast world just to do a podcast with uh, Danny Richardson. Uh, I've been listening to him since I was like 16, and finally, I've he said, Craig. After 10 years, you finally proved yourself worthy of being on my show now that Into the Wilds took it off. So um, I'm excited for that. So keep your eyes out. That, that'll probably be sometime early next year where we'll be launching a new project that we're, we've been talking about for a while now. So, uh, Super yeah. Super cool. Mm. To sum it all yeah. up, at Craig of Canada on Twitter, C-R-E-I-G of Canada. If you can't spell Canada, can't follow me. Nate, where can they find you? Uh, so, mostly I'm, I'm active on Twitter. It's at Nate Wolf, H-S, N-A-T-E-W-O-L-F-E-H-S. And you can find both me and Mike uh, playing in the UHL, United Hearthstone League. Mm -hmm. And all the details can be found at the website, which is unitedhearthstoneleague.com. As for the show, uh, we're Into the Wild. You can find us on Twitter at Into the Wild H-S. And um, everything, we basically got web presence everywhere um, with the Into the Wild HS. So uh, we've got a brand new website. It's into the wild hs.com, patreon.com slash into the wild hs, facebook.com slash groups slash into the wild hs, discord.me slash into the wild hs, into the wild hs at gmail.com if you want to reach out to us. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from you. So, if, yeah, if you want to send us some emails, um, we'll read them on the show. We'll try to do our best to respond. I'd love to hear from you guys. We are so into the wild, Nate. We are. <laughs> but uh, is there anything else, guys, or is that uh, we're pretty much good to go, I guess, eh? Yeah. I feel like I should um, be giving some unsolicited advice. Everybody listening, um, make sure to follow United HS League on Twitter so that you can – participate and watch the united conference finals between nate and myself it's gonna be a good time oh, yeah, regardless be fun. regardless of who wins we, me and nate we're best buds there's no bad blood we're gonna put on a great show and whoever wins is gonna represent the united conference and win the league you heard it here mike, first mike i just <laughs> hope i just hope you're a good sport when nate mops the floor with you oh oh Oh, that's those those fighting words. Cricket, cricket, <laughs> cricket, cricket. <laughs> I know it's gonna be awesome. Period. I'm I'm just excited. Period. I so I expected to beat Hat. I expected no one to believe me. So when it actually happened, I'm like, oh damn, I did this. So here we are, final four. So it might sound yeah, stupid, congrats, but yeah, whatever congrats. happens, I'm glad. That's fantastic. But thank you. I appreciate it. I it's crazy, man. No one else beat him but me. I'm like, what the hell? Nuts. But final four, we're here, Nate. Very good. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Final mm -hmm. four. Okay, and right now I have the recording paused for a second because somehow yeah. this week I deleted Nate's advice off my phone. Okay, well, I'm going to go pee because I just drank a cup of coffee and a Coke, and I'm, like, up to my eyeballs over here. Two <laughs> seconds. Go, pee, go pee, Nate. Go pee. <laughs> go do it. <laughs> Mike Lau. Yo. What's a good question for Nate this week? What's a good question for Nate? Yeah, for his advice. <laughs> Can I give you a, a serious one or a joking one? It doesn't matter. Whichever you want. Okay. Um, as long as it's unrelated. 
Wait, unrelated? To Hearthstone. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Hmm. Damn. That is I know it's tough, man. I usually think of these as the music's playing. So I always forget. And then I'll be like, do, 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 And I'll be like, oh, 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 Nate, what's your favorite sandwich? <laughs> <laughs> All right, question for Nate. Nate, I've been wondering. Jerk off lately. What kind of porn should I watch? <laughs> hold on, let me think of something. Hold on. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> A good question for Nate. Damn. Yeah, it's tough, eh? I already have my backup one now. If you keep me boring. No, I'm gonna have one. Hold on, one second. Let's Let's see. See. He can't know about it before the before the bumper plays. Let's if see. he gets back first, there's no question for uh -oh. Mike Lowndes. So we uh -oh. have to wait till next time. Uh oh. Let's see. Good thing I have his camera up so I can see when he sits. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, he's back. Damn. Oh, I was just gonna I can, say I can it. I can record two more hours. I'm Damn. Gonna... I was just gonna say it. <laughs> Shit. I guess it's you can late. still say it. I can leave. It's still good. No. I already got it. Yep. Here it is. Go for it. And now, unrelated advice. With Nate Wolf. Nate, I'm excited to have some lunch today, but I can't decide what kind of sandwich to have. What kind of sandwich would you recommend, Nate Wolf? Oh, dude, if I was you, I'd make a BLT. Uh, mm. Could you explain this to me? I, I, I just heard a bunch of letters. <laughs> oh, come on, son. <laughs> bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich. It's very oh, good. Oh, feeling... bacon, lettuce, tomato. That sounds good. And if you're, if you're feeling uh, a little bougie, you can add some avocado. Bad and bougie. Mm. Bad and bougie. Uh, avocados <laughs> are the reason millenniums are millennials. <laughs> All right? <laughs> and uh, make Lao as long as you're here. What kind of sandwich would you recommend? I would recommend a nice, juicy steak bomb. Are you familiar with that? No. Yeah, that okay. sounds quite good, but I'm not familiar with it either. All right. So I've lived in New England for too long, apparently. Okay. <laughs> steak bomb. We are talking a steak and cheese sub, and it includes these vegetables. Green peppers, onions, and mushrooms. All right, that's actually called a Philly cheese. Philly with, cheese uh, uh, you didn't let me finish. You didn't let me finish. With salami. Oh, that's okay. what makes it a steak bomb. It's actually called a Philly cheese steak sandwich with salami. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Philly cheese steak had mushrooms, peppers, and onions. I think that that's like mandatory. Hmm. But anyway. Um, Blister guy, fact check. It sounds delicious. Yeah, Blister Guy, let us know. Just, just, <laughs> what's he, all he knows about is Outbacks, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, because he's from New Zealand. Isn't Outback Australian? But anyway. Wiser words have never been spoken. And you heard that on In to the Wild. <laughs> Great show. Oh, that was a fun one. That was Dude, good. Yeah, that was awesome. We, we, we hit our great time of two hours. Mm-hmm. Good shit, man. Hey, Yo, that so was like gotta... jam-packed information two hours. That, that was, was great. Good. Hey, you gotta email me um, the bonus episode. Yes. And send me the song so I can, uh, or I mean, or you can post them. But uh, I have the artwork for the um, bonus episode. And okay. then if if you want to send it to me, I can post it all. Um, and then if you want to post the songs, or if you email if you email them to me, I'll post them. Yo, Craig, what part of Canada do you live in? Ontario. Ontario, okay. Yeah, I'm like a couple hours north of Toronto. Mm -hmm. RTW28. So are we? Are you one hour behind me? Or is it the same time zone? What time is it right now where you are? It is... Where are we at? Where's my clock? It helped. 144. Yeah, that's where I, I'm on. I'm on the same time. New York time zone. Gotcha. Yep, same. Okay. Yeah. So I'm south of you in New Hampshire, Cal State, pickup trucks yeah. or Subarus. <laughs> yeah. You people living in the future, 
They see me climb ladder, go by there like, oh my. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that. That was so sick. It's so fun. I love having. I love that I have access to the, the tracks when you guys are uh, doing it solo. So mm-hmm. I can like. <laughs> you just get a good laugh out of it. <laughs> oh yeah. That's one of my favorite ones. I don't want to miss a game. Remember mm-hmm. that one? That was great. That was my favorite. Um, yeah, I'm just exporting that. Oh, I guess I, I can send you the bonus. Oh, no. I need to do some mild edits to the bonus show, name, but I'll do that in the next. I'll have it to you by, what time is it right there? It's like 1045 there. Yeah. Lucky. I'll have it to you by noon your time. Or All right. Maybe. maybe yeah, soon. we did have, like, towards the end of it. Granted, we recorded for a long time. At, at one point, I was like, can you just stop talking? Yeah. <laughs> it was a little bit too long, but um, it hit. There was like an air conditioner unit thing that went off, and it was super loud. Like I just couldn't hear anything. We just had to stop. Did you guys riff on it? Do we what? Did you guys riff on it? We did a little bit, but I mean, I mean, he's a junior in high school. It's like it's not mm-hmm. a lot of. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. No, it was mostly like, oh my god, that was really loud. What was that? With my air conditioner. Okay, let's carry on. Um, <laughs> okay, I'll take a quick look. It won't take me too long to. Edit. I mean, or you can just leave it. <laughs> but, I might you know. just leave it. We'll see. I don't think it matters. It's just a bonus show. They love us. But I'm gonna put a song in the beginning and a song at the end for sure. Oh yeah, if you can. I mean, that won't take long. Even you, you can just use the one they used for the other one. Oh no, I'm gonna use a different one every week. Oh, beautiful. All right. This one's going to be... Uh, I might just put the Nactramus music in the beginning. Do you have it? Oh, no. It takes two seconds to... to uh... I guess you could pull it off YouTube or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I just go on YouTube and record it through the mixer. That's what's great about the mixer is you can just record stuff like that's streaming. That's awesome. Hmm. Yeah, that's why having a mixer is the best. No one has a mixer but us and like maybe the Angry Chicken and Hat and Quinn and Seed. Yeah, Nate, you're telling me that Craig does that. Craig, one day could we uh, meet up and like, could I pick your brain about that kind of stuff? Yeah, you need a mixer though. <laughs> like, Wait, I can't, I can't help without a mix. Like, if you don't have a mixer, like, I have no idea. Like, me and Rod Johnson talk, and we're on totally different wavelengths because I do everything through hardware, and he does everything through software. Oh, okay, okay. So, Nate, when you said something about Skype mixer or Skype MP3, mm. that's that's different. Oh, Skype no. MP3 we use as a backup to record. It's yeah. just our backup. We can use that too. Actually, I meant to ask Nate to do that today. It won't matter more than likely. But like, so the only difference between what I'm doing, and what you guys are doing, is like, so for if you don't have a mixer, then you can't play music during your show. Mm-hmm. Like you can, you have to splice it in afterwards. Yeah. And uh, the other difference is that when you record with people, like all of you guys would have to record on your own end. You know what I mean? And then you'd splice it all together while editing. Yes. But because I have a mixer, I have you and Nate coming in through one track, me coming in through another track, and then we all get recorded on the same track through my uh, through my laptop, through the mixer. And then I have my phone connected to another piece on the mixer that lets me shoehorn music into the show, like Nate's advice. And, uh, and then on top of that, we can have Nate doing a backup uh, uh, MP3 mp3 call thing so that uh nate's recording it in case but god forbid we lose everything in some freak accident like we did once before but okay for you it won't be hard you what you'd want to do is use mp3 uh you can literally just type in mp3 uh skype mp3 call recorder and it'll uh download easily and that's a backup because it's the quality is not as good but it's a good thing to have as a backup and then you and your co-hosts would all, uh, you and Ziggy would each record on separate ends and then just splice it together afterwards, and then you guys both sound really good. Ah, uh, I see. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun. It's not too hard, and then uh, you just export it as an MP3 when you're done. And then, boom, voila, all good. Voila. Uh, all right. Yes. But then if you ever wanted to step in, like, if you want to do more production or, like, have bumpers through the show, then eventually you could buy a mixer. Maybe if you do a Patreon or something in the long run and you get a mixer, it's only like, I think for my setup, including my microphone, I paid like about two, three, two fifty, three hundred bucks, and it'd probably be less for you because you're American. 
probably closer to 200 bucks for you. So my mixer was 100, but it would be like 60 American, 70 American. Mm -hmm. I, had to, uh, I had to get a basically a piece that allows my mixer to connect to my laptop and then my microphone. But you already have a microphone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. This is good yeah. to know. Thank you. I appreciate this. Oh, no problem. So, Nate, I'm going to uh, record. I'm going to fucking finish this up with the uh, with the editing and whatnot, send you the bonus show, and then maybe tonight or tomorrow morning, if you want to do, a, like, a, a quick show about uh, about whatever. Maybe we can talk about a little bit more about the arena now that we've played it and uh, just have some crazy game stories or whatever the fuck for episode 28.5. Yeah, I have no idea because I haven't played Arena. Well, we can talk about whatever you want. I've been playing. Yeah, I don't know. I've been talking, playing a ton of Arena, so I'll probably talk about that a little bit. I just want to talk about Luke Cage because that's a really good show, man. Oh, we can do that. Oh, oh I gotta watch that. <laughs> you said season two is out. Yeah, it's out on Netflix. I'm about to watch this before I go to work. Hell yeah. Yeah, I haven't watched it yet. I'd like to. Well, check. my girlfriend. What do you think? Too. What do you think about doing like bonus episodes that are not necessarily related to Hearthstone all that much? Genius oh, idea. As a fan of your show, genius. Do it. As long as we do some shit Hearthstone related once in a while on the Oh no, for sure. For I mean most of the time Hearthstone, but but I there's other stuff. I mean, half the time Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean I you talk about anything, but I'm down to Luke Cage spoilers. Maybe I'll get my lady to watch it with me this weekend. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's good. How far into it are you? You said you only have one episode left? Yeah. Damn. Well I gotta we start. Can really catch up. How many episodes is there? Like 16? 13, I think. 12 or 13. You don't have to watch the whole thing. I mean, we, we don't have to spoil it. We can just talk about it. It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, we but can it do is, like episode 1 to 6 at first. It is a great show. The only problem is, like, I've been binging it on Netflix, and, and the episodes all, like, carry into each other. So I don't know when, as far as the story goes, like, what, when one thing stops oh, and the other thing starts. Got you. But, okay. but I, could just say, I could just say when it was. Sure. All right, I'm down for that, and uh, maybe that's what we'll do. All right, um, I'm going to go because my girlfriend looks bored. Okay, oh, hey, just a quick thing. The songs that are on the Patreon, mm -hmm. where did you leave off? Because oh, there's a whole bunch on there, but I don't know what else is well, like, missing. I can add the other one, the newer ones, but uh, I think the, uh, it's only two that I don't have on there, and it's uh, the Avril Lavigne one and then Crack a Bottle. Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, you can just put make a new posting with them. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that every two or three ep or every like probably four episodes. So I don't want to do every single week. I don't think. No, it's too much. But but I'll just put it up on little little chunks, little tiny chunks. And may uh, maybe I'll even just put up a whole new uh, put all the songs on again. You know what I mean? I'll figure it out. So that they're not good. Digging, digging through the Patreon every time. Anyway, yeah, I wish there was a better way to organize yeah. it, but mm. whatever. Yeah. It's tough. With Jim and them especially, like the one of the patrons I subscribe to, there's like a hundred, uh, at least there's like hundreds of posts, mm -hmm. hundred, hundreds of different bonus shows, and it's super hard to navigate. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. mm. I'll talk to Hat about it later because he's good with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you can tag shit. I think you can tag shit, which makes it a little, uh, a little easier. But anyway, okay, guy, Mike, thank you so much for coming on, man, and you're and for being uh, such a good sport with the song. Hey, I want to thank you guys for allowing me to do it and asking me, um, having me guest on the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. Maybe one day we will do one that's not rap. I feel like we're being a little racist. <laughs> or fitting right in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Have a good night or day. All right, you too. Take it easy. Yeah, so take care, guys. All right, see ya. All right. All right. Mm -hmm. So, I want to thank everybody who I uh, was able to watch, stop by, check out the uh, podcast. I know I wasn't active in chat, but um, this episode will drop Monday, if not tomorrow. So, when it does, I'll make sure to uh, link it over to my Twitter so you guys can check it out and peep it. All right? Everybody have a good day, and I'm out. I'll see you on Twitter.